Hello and welcome to Reach and Reflect, a podcast where we interview guests from both traditional and alternative life paths with the aim of figuring out for the benefit of our audience where they find fulfillment and meaning. At 27 years old, Alejandro Perez is a CFO for a nonprofit that mentors underprivileged youth, destined for X, as well as a data scientist at Lyft. A son of two immigrants, Harvard alumni, and Stanford Business School hopeful, he exemplifies the American dream in more ways than just his personal achievements. Alejandro is a prolific thinker, philanthropist, and lives in a balanced fashion. We will walk through his life's journey and do our best to extract and communicate his accumulated wisdom for your benefit. As always, we ask our audience to check in with how well this guest resonates with you. Resonance may be a sign that your path and purpose is along the same lines as our guests. Thank you. And if you enjoy this episode, please leave a rating or review. Live. Right on. Alejandro, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Happy to be here. Me too. <laughs> I've been um, very excited to interview you, uh, considering what you do, what you've done, and where you're going. Um, so before we get started, I just want to, you know, get a quick like bio from you, just a short summary, like where you're at now, what are you doing for work? What are you planning on doing? Yeah. Um, so How I think old are you? I'm, I'm, I'm in a pretty interesting position right now. Um, so I guess some, some broader context, I'm 27. Uh, I grew up in Miami. Um, you know, went to school in Boston. Live in New York. Now I'm here. Uh, a data scientist, you know, for the, for the bills. And, uh, but I also work uh, as a, the CFO of a nonprofit and bike a, a bunch. Um, I'm in an interesting position right now in terms of, like, transitioning. I feel like life is, like, this switch back between, like, uh, execution and like repositioning and I think that like I'm getting to a point where I'm gonna be like, kind of changing um, you know big parts of my life so really excited to uh, kind of reflect on all of these things through uh, this interview cool yeah. glad to hear it um, and since I forgot to do the intro for reach and reflect I'm gonna do that right now so for uh, any of our audience who is new to this reach and reflect is a podcast where we interview people who have achieved some sort of respectable position in the domain <laughs> of their choosing um, and we invite our viewers to use our uh, guests as a map and their intuition as a compass to navigate themselves through life. Um, so our, our guest today is Alejandro Perez. Um, he already gave a brief introduction. Um, just to give you a little context on how what we're trying to do here is, you know, really paint a picture for our viewers as to what happened, you know, what's gone on in your life to get you where you were today and what's going on today and kind of what you plan for tomorrow. And I, I think this is like a great effort. I actually w went through uh, an exercise personally where like I literally wrote down like a bunch of people that I know and like a bunch of qualities that I think they have and try to like map out like where I relate in, in, in regards to each of those. So uh, I think this is a great exercise. Yeah. Dope. Cool. Um, well, let's get started then. So you've already mentioned you're a data scientist now. Um, can we say where you work? Yeah. Uh, Lyft. Yeah, data scientist at Lyft, um, and you know you you're a Harvard graduate, so that's obviously super impressive. Um, you know, you so see, you've I guess on the spectrum of guests we have, you're more in the, like traditional, like go to good school, get good grades, get out, go work at you know a tech company, right? Do all that. Um, but before we get to like exactly how that's you know working out, and then what your future plans are, I'd like to rewind a bit um, and get into like really who are you as a person and like what got you here. So if we could start with your, your childhood and just maybe getting into like, you know, your younger years and tell us a bit about those in your family. Yeah, um, it's it's uh, definitely formative, I would say. Um, like my family is incredibly close. Um, you know, I think that's part of like this Latin culture, but also even then my family kind of stands out as being like uh, just super duper close. Um, so for context, like my, my mom um, was, you know, uh, a huge influence in my life, obviously. and. Um, I think that like her entire side of the family kind of really demonstrated like what it means to be like, have, like unconditional love, like the idea mm. of generosity without like any sort of goal, but just like to demonstrate and exercise love is, um, I think I'd like set like a pretty high bar in terms of, uh, you know, the type of person you can be. And then, uh, my, my dad, um, and his side of the family, like really exemplifies like extreme, uh, like values and like value oriented, uh, kind of living, uh, as well as like work ethic and, and broader vision. So I think that. Um, you know, my family really set like great examples for me in that, in those regards. Um, and yeah, I, I love staying close to them. We, uh, were lucky enough over the course of a couple of years to get, uh, multiple houses on the same dead end street. 
And so we literally have like, you know, uh, like four houses in a row that are just like my family. And it's, uh, you know, pretty rare, I think, to have that, that, uh, that closeness. Whoa, yeah. that's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I had no idea. <laughs> Um, you said something that really interests me, which is your, your dad was very value oriented. Could you explain some of those values? Oh yeah. Uh, I just think that like, there's no compromise, like there's no compromising in terms of, um, kind of like the righteousness. It's like, you know, y if you see some things is right and some things is, is like true and, and good, like you kind of, uh, kind of hold yourself accountable. I think that he does a particularly good job of, of, uh, kind of checking himself to make sure that he's always, uh, living along his own set of values. I feel like it's easy to have values, but then on the other side to like actually hold yourself accountable to them. Mm. Um, I think it's like something I still challenge myself to do better every day. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of people could do that. So it was a privilege to have uh, somebody like that. Mm. Yeah. And what, what do you think some of those values like are? Like, could you give us yeah. an example? Yeah, I mean, I think like fairness, equ equality, um, like <laughs> preferentialism uh, in general, I think like meritocracy, uh, like a strong value on like ethic, a work ethic, um, mm. really kind of making sure that, uh, you're thinking of everybody, uh, in a situation. I think that's mm. one thing that really impressed me, uh, growing up. So he, he ran, you know, uh, organizations of tens of thousands of people and would get, uh, like reviews, uh, for people who were, you know, working in factories in different countries, uh, about how he like made time to like get, get and connect and like empathize with their particular interests. Mm. Um, and I think that like, the uh the example of like you know uh, caring deeply about so many different types of people is really cool wow yeah he sounds like an amazing man yeah he's still at it that's great <laughs> 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 and then what about your current way of life can you trace back to your childhood and <sighs> these values yeah so the new yeah um i, I think I, I try to embody uh you know both my, my like my mom's side of the values and, and, and my dad's side of the values um on like kind of the work component, I definitely have like extremely high uh, career ambitions in terms of uh, the impact I want to achieve, and I think a lot of that um, you know has to do with uh, w with some of those those values I mentioned of like um, kind of pushing yourself and and you know working with a bunch of people. Um, I think that the, kind of the the one that I'm, I'm most interested in, in kind of pursuing right now is. Uh, around the idea of like unconditional love. I think that mm. um, really pursuing altruism is, has been something that I, I have been pushing myself more towards. Um, and I think that's been kind of like guiding my, my influence in, in the nonprofit space. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's like giving without any expectations of something in return. Right. Right. Awesome. Yeah. That's, that's a really good place to be, I think. I think so, but I, you know, it definitely has its downfalls. I'm happy to talk about these too. Um, <laughs> sure. Yeah, I mean, it, it's like I, I, I think that I've gotten to a place now where like I'm so excited about like the altruism component, but like not really um, like enjoying it myself. In that, it's like mm. you know, you, you you kind of intentionally deprive yourself of of the pleasure of giving uh, because you kind of convince yourself that it's the right thing to do. Um, mm. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that it's, it's, it's a good place to be, if, you know, for the world. It's something that I'm questioning as if, uh, you know, how to make it sustainable. You know? Well, that's, that's something I want to double click on real quick. So like, so you're intentionally depriving yourself of the no, pleasure? Well, I mean, it's not, not, not intentionally, but it, it's mm. more, it's more of, uh, like I if you convince yourself that you're doing this exclusively for the benefit of other people, mm. um, you know, it, it's something that, yeah, it, it, you, you'd like, it'd be nice for it to be, um, I guess also like receiving a little bit, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty tiring sometimes, <laughs> but, uh, it's, uh, it's yeah. a good, uh, it's a good exercise. Right. But do you receive like anything out of it? Like what, what? I mean, fulfillment. Yeah. And I, yeah. I think like it's, it's really fulfilling to see the world move towards a place that I'm, I'm, you know, more excited about. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, uh, you know, at times it's, uh, it's a lot of giving and, and, right. and not a lot of receiving, which is, you know, something. But right. I feel it, yeah. so if, if I understand this right, you're, it kind of comes and goes in waves, right? Sometimes right. you're just like way indexed on giving. Well, I think everybody, you know, sometimes wants to give a lot and sometimes wants to receive a lot. And I think yeah. that like coming to terms with like, okay, like maybe I just need to like receive some, you know, uh, some love for now is, uh, is, is an, an it's important like mental health checks. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That, that level of awareness is um, actually kind of uncommon and like, like really cool to see that you're, you're understanding that. <laughs> um, dope. Um, <laughs> cool. So yeah, not to rabbit hole too far in that. We'll get more into those things later. Um, could you tell me about like, any of your parents' interests that seem to have rubbed off on you outside of that value structure? Hmm. Um, uh, yeah, so I think I think education, um, that's kind of something that's been incredibly important to both my parents. Um, yeah, I think that 
um, basically some, both my parents are, are immigrants. Um, my, my dad came here to go to college. Um, so he grew up in Columbia, went to Hopkins undergrad. Um, and then my mom, uh, left, uh, Nicaragua at 13, uh, with her family. And, um, you know, she came here not speaking a word of English and like literally went to high school with, this is before the internet, right? So like to have, uh, like a English, uh, English to Spanish dictionary and like would translate books by hand and like teach herself the language like that. Um, and then the opportunities that were unlocked for, for my family because of education, um, uh, it's, it's like the, it's the key to upward mobility, uh, in, in kind of, uh, society. So I think that's something that like, I'm super excited about. I've, I've reaped the benefits of it and like really want to find ways to stress that importance to more people so that, um, we can kind of uplift them or, you know, from, from within. Yeah. That's amazing. That's like a double American dream story. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> people, people, you know, people, people say the American dreams that I, I don't have to look too far to uh, to believe in it. So it's pretty pretty cool. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, and we actually have plenty more of those stories that are coming <laughs> on this very podcast. Right on. Um, so that's great. Um, so moving on from childhood, could you tell me kind of what your middle years were like, like middle school, high school? Yeah, um, I think I think it's just, you know pretty. So, so growing up in Miami is, is pretty interesting. Um, you know, I I went to so, so Miami is like the capital of Latin America. It's mm. like anyone who like needed to or could uh, leave the country, uh, the countries of Latin America, uh, does end up there. Uh, mm. And so you have kind of two different groups of people. You have immigrants who like came there by choice, and the immigrants who did not come there by choice, and um, so it, it's a very kind of a strange place. It's like I describe it as like Latin version of Vegas. Mm. Uh, and so I, I think that like growing up there, my parents would kind of intentionally kind of try to keep away some of the uh, more notorious parts of, of Miami. Um, so I, I focused a lot on school. Um, mm. That was like a huge part of, of I mean, it still is. I'm pretty into, into math and whatnot. But um, yeah, so I, I think that was like that was kind of the main theme was kind of just like studying, um, you know, extracurriculars, staying busy. Going on around me was a whole bunch, though. <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> what, what was, like, your uh, social dynamic like? like? Was it, like, just studying or? Yeah, I mean, I, I was lucky enough to uh, be in all the highest classes. And so there was, like, a group of, like, seven or eight of us who were <laughs> all the nerds. And we would, we'd hang out. And mm. uh, we're still super close. And, yeah, super happy with that. Cool. Um, were there any, like, formative moments uh, in those years? or? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so the, the, the biggest one was... My my childhood friend, uh, and this is a long story. I don't know how uh, how you can pull me out of the rabbit hole if we go if we go too deep. Sure. But basically, uh, I had a um, I had a childhood friend who's now actually in jail for for attempted murder. Uh, uh, yeah. And uh, but basically, we um, we got close, and uh, then in in you know lower uh, you know school it was like early parts of high school. Um, he attempted to hack into a. Uh, a computer, a computer network, um, and uh, basically, I had reported and discussed this uh, s- security vulnerability with with the school administration prior. Mm. Um, so it was a school network. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm, I'm summarizing a whole bunch here, but basically, mm-hmm. uh, it was a story of like doing the right thing and like reporting it to the right people at the right you know time versus trying to exploit something and uh, make the most of it for your own gain. Yeah. Um, which uh, it's you know so it's kind of very specific in terms of like. W- times when life diverges yeah uh, and and so you see the other side of that and i think that that kind of quickly gave me uh an interest in um you know kind of the accountability sometimes mm. interesting so so your friend went out and exploited the thing that you reported he as tried, a yeah he tried to hack into the school network and change his attendance and grades and all sorts of stuff and <laughs> yeah i i mean i don't know why like, like how, how, well work, how well that work out for i him. mean like if you're like you just don't have those like you just don't have those grades like you I mean like teachers are teachers you only have so many students you know and uh so went poorly he ended up leaving the, the school but um wow but yeah yeah and uh so we separated ways pretty and then you know a couple of years later this thing happened so yeah jeez <laughs> yeah Okay. Um, <laughs> wow. So cool. So that gave you a taste of like doing what, you know, you might call the right thing versus not. Right. I mean, th- th- speaking to like the values my, my, my parents uh, ex- exemplified, right? So this is like, I think like a, a pretty clear example of like the right thing to do is this, like the tempting thing to do is like, yeah, like graduate like valedictorian. And change the <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, you know, reckless, but you know, like to write it down and talk to somebody about it. Um, 
just I think that gets kind of the formative moment. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that's cool. So you got this like dichotomy of honesty versus basically dishonesty at that point, yeah. right? It's it's forgery mm-hmm. um, of really important documents, and then you found this vulnerability and said like, "Hey guys, there, watch out for this thing," um, which you know sounds to me like is rooted in the intent of like protecting and you know just making something work as it is right. supposed to work, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's interesting. I don't know what what else happened in between in the two of your lives. Well, I mean, we'll get into your lot, life, yeah. but like, it's it sounds like you two diverged pretty hard. Pretty hard. <laughs> pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Well, I mean, if he's out there, I I hope uh, everything works out properly. And me too. Me too. Yeah, as as, as well as it should for him. Um, did he have any other like key like aha moments, turning points? Um, just to set this up real quick. Like we also, I don't know if you had any of these moments, but if you did, you know, I find it's really good for us to get into any of like the lower points, any of the downs and describe what that was like yeah. and especially highlight how you got out of them because I think a lot of our audience is in those situations. Right, right. Um, yeah, so I, I have some, uh, I think they come a little later in, in, mm-hmm. in the life story. I'm happy to talk, should I, should I go to there now or do you think? Yeah, we can we can get into into like college or where. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's around there. But um, but I'll, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll provide some more context in that like, I actually feel like incredibly privileged in that like my like low points have have been so uh, internal like mm. the I guess there's a couple of couple of things I'll say like to me like low points and aha moments have, have been perfectly correlated with uh, like instances of resistance and like lacking vulnerability oh and so it, I, I like which is a complete privilege because that means that they're inside me versus like external factors like health problems or, or you know those type of problems so have been like lucky enough to, to have that. Mm, um, very blessed. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know the, 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 the good problems to have. So um, yeah, I would say like like lowest moments. It was I think the biggest theme has been like coming away from like what is expected of you uh, and and trying to explore like individuality and like what that means mm. to be um, and like to your point like so like the intro right of like you know like went to Harvard like d- successful like job and 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 does this thing and like. And it's like it's like there's this this path of, of success that is like carved out when you're like kind of riding like this uh, this like wave mm-hmm. of, of of privilege really and um, so like questioning like what parts of those are things that like, you truly believe in and are truly excited about versus um, like kind of falling into the mold that's already there yeah um, and so I think that like uh, some of the biggest development moments for me came uh between like college and early career and like now actually like just as i moved to california um and i think the the best way to summarize it was was kind of like how i ended up in my first job Mm. um and so i i worked in finance for two years prior to working in tech and it was purely well two reasons one i wanted to be in new york but two um, was because it's like you, you go to Harvard and you have uh, these like banks knocking on your door and they're like, you'll pay you exuberant amounts of money to come work there. And, and it seemed just, you know, prestigious. And I remember the first time I heard about consulting was um, my freshman year dorm. And there was this, this group of girls who lived across the hall and they're like, oh, Brenda's dating this guy. He works at McKinsey. And I'm like, what's McKinsey? I'm like, I want to work there. You know, and like, mm-hmm. and um, that was the impetus. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, that's me. That's me. Like, I, I, but it's not. And right. so, you know, you kind of dug these holes and build this like sense of identity around um, like, oh, I'm going to be like this person. And uh, also like growing up in Miami, like, you know, people, people use money as identity there. And mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's quite easy to, to buy a personality sometimes. And so like realizing that like, that's not exactly fulfilling is, uh, you know, it's a bit, a bit of a shock when you're like, oh shit, like, I got to come up with this myself. <laughs> 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 but it's uh, you are not your rims. <laughs> well, sorry, Rick Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Rose. <laughs> uh, yeah. So th- those those are definitely some moments. Um, yeah, I think like basically I I was doing this job in finance and it was like going all right. Like I was doing the work that was like being handed to me, but it was not like fulfilling. I was not m- excited and not taking on more, not con- being constructive. It, it was very much like consuming the assignments, completing them and putting them out. Um, and so after two years there, I spent three months unemployed, kind of just like reflecting and, and thinking about like, how do I actually want to spend my time? I couldn't motivate myself to go and interview again for another finance role. So um, I think that like that kind of moment of like, okay, like who am I? Is It was, it was like a low point, but also like a great starting point. So, mm. yeah. And um, I want to, 
Yeah, I want to dive into that. And then I also want to dive into kind of what Harvard was like for you too, because I think that's going to be an interesting point, at least for me, I'm interested in like yeah. what that's like. But but since we're on this right now, you got three month discovery period. Can you explain what that was like for you? Yeah. Um, Feel free to go in detail. We got time and... Uh, that's all I got, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's something about like uh, quietness. Like, so um, I think that like in many parts of my life, the answer to quell... Um, any sort of like feeling of uh, insecurity or uh, emptiness has been to just do more. And it's like, just, yeah, like just, just keep on doing more, like pick up another hobby, like travel mm -hmm. more, do whatever. And so once you eliminate, uh, you know, a job that there goes like at that time, like 10 hours of my day, uh, mm -hmm. no income, right? So like, you gotta be like sensible about like travel and whatnot, like focus on getting another job because it was a pivotal part of my career. So. Um, and that's like a very lumpy process, right? So like there's like stretches of days where it's just kind of just hanging out. Mm. Um, and so I think that like that's where I really had the first time to like actually reflect. I think uh, prior to that, the job that I had was cripplingly anxiety inducing. And so, you know, would go to work, hate every second of it, come back and, and like, you know, it was, it, was, it was comfortable. It was a good time to, to uh, be in New York, but not much time to like sit back and think. So both comfortable and crippling. I'd be comfortable in that, like, you get to lean, you get to prop your identity up on, on mm. <laughs> this thing. Like, hey, I'm a finance guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm a banker. Yeah, exactly. I'm walking here. <laughs> 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 right, exactly. So, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I think, like, that's kind of, that was, like, a really pivotal part of, of, uh, of my transition into who I am today. Mm. Um, Could yeah. you dive into, like, how you pivoted? Yeah, I mean, reflection, journaling, meditation. Um, mm. I think that, like, Question. Did, you, did you have a routine? Like, if you take take us through a day, oh, what that was. Oh, I mean, it's go extremely long walks, like extremely long walks. It was mm. it was a great time to be unemployed. It was like September in New York, so it was like mm. kind of warm, and um, I I love eating, so I would like you know it's hard to get a reservation for two at seven thirty, but it's easy to get a reservation for one on a Tuesday. Yeah. So I would like go out to uh, to all the places I couldn't get reservations at before, and uh, and just like sit there and think and and like. Um, come up with like how I want to spend my time, like what makes me happy, what doesn't question the assumptions as to why, um, try to understand myself. I haven't, I haven't spent much time doing that. Mm. And this is all through like deep, like self inquiry. Yeah. I mean, yeah. honestly, it's like, it's like this podcast, but without the microphones. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, that, Hey, that's, that's a validating point, man. Yeah. Um, so like when you, did you have any particular techniques um, that you would do? Yeah, I mean, uh, I do now. I, I at the at the time, not not much. Um, which is kind of like, I mean, it was it was like still like this like oh, I have this feeling like what do I do, <laughs> mm -hmm. and like trying to trying to grapple it. And then, uh, but now now I do like a tremendous amount of meditation, a lot of journaling. Um, yeah, I think reflection, um, the talking about these things with people. Yeah, uh, including a community in it is it cool. Cool. Yeah, awesome. Um, were there any like highlights, lowlights of that three month period? Uh, yeah, I mean, not uncertainty, right? Like mm. it was uh, at, at hindsight now. Like I mean, God bless that I got this job. <laughs> it was uh, it really worked out in terms of transitioning. But um, the there was a point where it's like you know I, I I mean like when I was there, right? I was not a data scientist. I did not see myself as, as like like this role now. And um, so questioning like what job am I going to have? And and you know, I, I grew up in a privileged background. I, I want to, like, I enjoy nice things. Like, I want to make money. And so um, the idea of, like, breaking away from finance, which at that time felt like the only way to, like, really progress and, and reach that, mm. um, was uh, was discomforting in that, like, is, you know, you don't really know what's what's next. Mm. Um, so I guess the uncertainty really was was kind of a low point. Mm. And, and how did you feel, like, the moment you quit finance and we're just in this three-month period? Oh, uh, I mean, that, like? I, I, it, it was, like, the thing that, like, it's, like, the thing that needed to happen, but you knew it was going to suck. Um, yeah. yeah, I, uh, I was a, I did not have a fit in that, in that, in that industry uh, at the time. Um, you know, it was just, uh, not very value additive in my opinion, but, mm. um, so I felt, felt good to like, you know, feel like uh, transition away from that. I knew I wanted to do something a little more constructive and I feel like tech is a great opportunity to build, um, novel things. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah. and when you were when you were jumping ship, like what was your mind state at the point when you were like, I'm quitting? <laughs> uh, so like, how, it, did, how did it take? What did it take to get you there? Yeah. You know? Oh gosh. So uh, well, I mean, the reason. 
so first of all, it was like a, it was a mutually uh, like neither me nor the company wanted to be there. Uh, and <laughs> to be clear, I mean, I, I did my job. Like I checked the boxes, but it was not like you know nobody's gonna write home about the performance there. And uh, but I think that like the reason I wasn't super excited about that role was because um, it, it didn't feel like we were doing the right thing. Um, so we managed the the investments of. Uh, uh, I guess like the retirement funds of teachers. Um, and so like literally elementary school teachers and middle school teachers mm. retirements. And, you know, some of these partners were cutting themselves like multi-million dollar checks. And like, we'd go out and like spend a lot of money on, on very trivial things. And mm. to see that and then be like, you know, this is like literally directly one line coming out of the retirement fund of an ele elementary school teacher. Like that doesn't feel like, yeah, sure. The market will support it. But like, you know, is, is that the right thing to do? Right. Um, and so, I definitely felt like this is, you know, like this, this group does not have the same culture. Also, another thing, the, the company was 200 people. Uh, 50 of them were investment professionals. Uh, of those 50 people, uh, 49 of them were men and 48 of them were white. And so I was just like, I don't know. It didn't, didn't really feel like a very inclusive kind of thoughtful place. So. Yeah, I, I've heard those are um, the stereotypical boys clubs. Yeah, and it's like, oh, um, you you find the best town in the world, and they're all from the Upper East Side in Connecticut. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> all played lax, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I reported to lax. So. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, he's a great guy. But also, and also, I learned a tremendous amount of the company. Um, mm. But you know, I was happy to leave that. And but also uncertain. You know, I, mm. I, I granted, I left on the day where I got like a nice bonus on the exit. So mm. you know, like wasn't too worried about uh, finance stuff, but. Career-wise, was questioning what was going to happen. Mm, interesting. And how d how did you deal with that questioning and uncertainty? Uh, the way I do it with everything, just thinking hard about it. You know, mm. like what, like why am I uncertain? It's because I don't have a job. I don't have a job. It's I don't know what I want to do. And mm -hmm. then so like really just like thinking through it and making it actionable. I love making things into lists and then just taking through them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel you, man. Yeah. That, that's I'm also a, a person of action as well. And like anytime I have a thought, like my next two words are so what? Yeah. Right. Yeah. What do I change? Right. Like, do I need to change anything? Um, well, that's that's really cool. Um, so so these three months were just basically spent like reflecting, figuring out what you wanted to do. And then like, did you go through any like how are your emotions during this time? Uh, Self-doubt. Right. Like, mm -hmm. I, I think that. Um, yeah, I definitely like felt like I I mean, I don't know, like you, you, you leave this role. Now you're not contributing, you know, and also this is nothing with New York is that it's it's a such a consumption driven city. Yeah, it's like you you eat, you drink, you party, you buy art like, you know, like there's that you just consume, consume, consume. And so then to like not be giving some people something to consume, like you feel like useless in this. You're not like, you know, part of this of this this group. Right. Mm. Um, so a lot of self doubt in terms of like trying to figure out where I wanted uh, to position myself. Um, not, I wouldn't say great. Uh, I wasn't like worried, but I was like, you know, I was getting interviews, but like for some roles and some of them were working out, some of them weren't. Mm. I invested in myself. I taught myself um, professional some skills that I thought would be relevant for my mm. career. Um, the nice thing about it though was the flip side. When I did get this role, um, I think it really kicked off like a lot of self empowerment mm. in terms of like, I really got this, this belief of like, if not you, then who? Uh, and, and so, I think that like with that kind of unbounded uh, ability to convince yourself that you can do anything, like it, you know, it definitely, uh, I don't know, I think it opened up this a lot of opportunities. Yeah, wise words, man. If not you, then who? I dig it. <laughs> that goes with another one of my favorites, which is if not now, then when? Right, yeah, <laughs> the same thing. <laughs> That's all you've got. Yeah, yeah. You and now. Right. Um, <laughs> awesome. So yeah, so we, that, that's really cool. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're able to share that. Um, and since we skipped over college, I kind of want to zoom oh, in yeah. a bit on that more and like, it's, it, cause it sounds like you found this mold and you fell into it and then you've been climbing out of it as it were. And I kind of want to go through the process of like, you know, what was it like in the mold of Harvard? And then also like, how can people know they're in a mold? Right. Right. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and, and then, you know, cause we talked about getting out of it a bit with the reflection and all that, but just, uh, okay. leading up to it, what are some warning signs and what was it like for you at Harvard? Okay. Yeah. Uh, both great questions. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I'll talk about Harvard because, uh, I miss it. So it, it was, uh, <laughs> oh dude, it was, it was incredible, man. It's, it's like, I mean, Cambridge is, is one of, one of the, one of a kind of place. Like, you, not, like not only Harvard, right? So you have Harvard, MIT, Tufts, BU, BC, Northeastern, uh, Wellesley, Olin, like I mean, you have tons of colleges there mm. in Suffolk. Um, and so it, it really felt like a college town. Um, but then even within that, like Harvard, 
I mean, it's it's incredible, right? Like the I had like Ray Dalio and Larry Summers come and do a debate, like just right there. And I'm like hanging out with them and ta- asking them directly, like, oh, what do you think about this policy? And mm. for, uh, for those who don't know, could you explain? who those two people are? Yeah, so uh, Larry Summers was the former uh, president of Harvard, uh, and later it was in consideration to be the Fed chair, uh, and Ray Dalio is the uh, founder and CEO of, yeah, I guess he stepped down, of Bridgewater, um, the biggest hedge fund in the world, made the most money for investors of anyone ever. Um, so pretty influential people in terms of industry and like economics and finance, so um, it was pretty cool to like, I mean, that's just one example. That's like one day. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the uh, the opportunity to access people with incredible connections. My my roommate, his uncle was David Koch. So I went to like the Koch family's like Hampton's house and I went to their Christmas party. And like, y- you know, y- you're there with like the extreme elite. Um, mm. So I guess it was like one of those things of like, uh, Im- like imposter syndrome-ish in, in mm. that like you, you're like, this is me? Like, what is it? Am I? I don't know. Like, what, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? Um, so I, I think like that, that, that was like the really cool thing about Harvard is that you get put into these situations where they seem like so otherworldly that you start to like trust yourself in them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's like the most powerful part of it. Um, you know, there's, there's definitely negative components to it. Like it's super competitive, uh, very kind of waspy. There's, uh, you know, there's 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 issues there for sure, but I, I, I had such a tremendously positive experience there. Um, the teaching is fine. I like nothing to do with the courses. It's all about the people. Like the mm. classes I took were the same calculus classes you take anywhere else, same books. Um, but you know, there's something st- about studying at the same place. Oh, I lived in the, I lived in the room. I lived in the room that Facebook was invented in. <laughs> so I was like, I'm like, like literally Zuck was here doing this thing like 10 years ago. Like I think I can maybe try something give it a swing yeah so sounds inspiring yeah i mean it, it's one of those things it's like like y- if you're ever questioning your path it's like no dude like like right there <laughs> like, what are you doing like <laughs> like you're literally in the shoe print of zuckerberg like <laughs> <laughs> so it was uh yeah i mean like it, it, it feels cool to like have that um empowerment it, i guess it's not great in that like you're putting a lot of of like your sp- self-worth and confidence onto like this institution. But, and I think mm-hmm. like that, that, that is to answer your other question of like, when are you in this hole? Um, it's like when I think, I think it's like when you're putting a lot of your identity uh, or framework for value around like institutions and like third parties. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, it, like speaking about like Miami, you know, these people with the Lamborghinis or whatever, you know, it's like if you idolize things, if you're, if you're feeling like, um, value or direction is being dictated by a particular group or something like that. Like, I think that that's that's a good a good place to to start. That said, I, I I've gotten into this this thing now of asking myself like, am I in this mold? Am I in that mold? And mm-hmm. it's it's very quickly existential. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> it goes deep. But you know, it's not at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Before moving on, like, what existential things have you ended up? Oh in? gosh. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's it, I guess. To my point of before of like this altruism and and also like how I started during reflections of like questioning what makes me happy and what makes me makes me sad and it's like at some point I kind of want to like just stop the questioning you know and it's like if it's very hard to like find enjoyment in something without like questioning it further mm. um, and I think like that's like it it, it, it almost becomes like uh, between the head and the heart you know it's like mm. you try to like just like live and like mm-hmm. love. Um, versus like being analytical and thinking. Mm-hmm. And I think that's like, I mean, I think the most concrete example would be like, I'll be at a party, like the seventies party. And I was like looking around, I'm like, okay, here's what we're going to change next time. Like, the, you know, we got to like get these like security improvements here, <laughs> you know, like, and I'm like, but dude, you're literally at a party. Like, why can't, you know, yeah. what are you doing up there? Yeah. And so it's kind of grappling with myself to like stop thinking and start, you know, chilling out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's a tricky one. Um, a lot of like for me as well. And, you know, a lot of other people who are on the more, you know, uh, esoteric or woo end of the spectrum will say, like, this, this whole part of our lives in, in humanity is about moving from the head to the heart. Yeah. Learning how and when to do that. Right. Because um, sometimes you need to be in your head. Yeah. If you're planning a trip, like, you're not, you're yeah. not going to fucking do that. Right. Like, right. you're not booking flights. So you're, like, come on. Yeah. Uh, but, 
but yeah, there's all these moments that we're not present for because we're out there. Yeah. In, in here, which is in the same thing, right? But right. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, yeah, like the, the most beautiful thing is like, you know, we talk a lot about these like spectrums uh, and, and like very rarely is the right answer, like 100% on either side usually. Yeah. And so kind of like commit to myself to like walk it back a bit sometimes is, is uh, it's pretty exciting. That's it. I, I, I love thinking. So it's like, yeah, but it's, it, you know, I, I guess it, it, it exactly, but it, it, it can get a little lonely, you know? So you just, mm-hmm. you know, that's why I think that like, first of all, this is a great format to, uh, yeah. So if you have any techniques, I'm excited to hear what some of your other guests have said about, uh, about this as well. Yeah. Um, you know, one, one big thing, which you're probably familiar with is just like, becoming aware of your breathing because in order to do that you have to drop your awareness out of your head and down to your chest right and then it's what for me what i find and it's the corniest thing ever because we've been hearing this forever follow your heart which means movements and thoughts originate from a sense down here right so that's like the starting point the impetus for whatever you're doing yeah and you actually end up moving in an entirely different way reacting in an entirely different way it's a really interesting thing like the more you (laughs) meditate into that like, I'm like, what the hell? Like, this is here? Yeah. This is, uh, right. But anyway. No, I, remember, I remember we were at um, and some get-together, and you are like, you know, like, sit up like this, and, like, imagine, like, the your spine going directly to the core of the earth. And I'm like, okay, so now I'm not in my head. I'm in my spine now. <laughs> like, yeah. And yeah, you can and be it's your incredible. Spine. Yeah, exactly. You can, you, can be, you can be all sorts of places. So, um, yeah, it's a cool exercise. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so yeah, we, we'll get into some, like, at the end, we're talking about, like, actionable advice um for all the viewers but yeah that's that's a that's an easy one to do everyone's breathing all the time and you know just kind of like dropping your awareness down um and all you have to do is just imagine it going down right like that's how you move yeah. it like weirdly enough um but cool so moving on then so we, we've kind of we've gone over your backstory um and as we get into this you know i'm you mentioned you know um your, your life path. And so I want to ask, like, if you had to do it all over again, what, if anything, would you change? Yeah. I, was, I think this is like one of the hardest questions on here. Um, I, it, it's like the butterfly effect, right? So if you change one thing, like, what does that mean about changing other things? And, um, I, I guess like the answer is like the only thing that I wish I could do differently was to like realize and learn things and some things quicker. But mm-hmm. uh, at some point, like that is, that's just like accelerating life, which, I don't know what the rush is. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, like I made a couple of mistakes, like a couple hundred times and it, like, it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be really cool if like maybe just like 100 times. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, you know, it's, uh, yeah, you know, it's, but I'm here now. So, and, and I, I'm like happy with where I am and I think that the path forward is, is should be cool. So, yeah, yeah, that, that actually, you, you brought up a good point and I want to quote one of my favorite uh, deceased philosophers, Alan Watts here. And he says, you know, the music is very unlike traveling, for example, where traveling is about the destination, but music is basically about the journey. Right. It's no one makes the end of the composition, the point of the composition. Right. Nobody. Uh, that's, that's bad composition. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like what kind of songs like rushes to the end and like, boop, it's done. Like what that. So, um, so that, that's really cool to see that you had that, that same perspective, like in just based off of reflecting on your own life. Right. Um, and so I, th- I then wonder, like, do you come back to that if you find yourself in one of those, you know, call them shittier situations? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, um, yeah, there's, um, oh, for sure. I mean, like, I, I think that, like, I can definitely have gotten a pr- almost like appreciation for, like, being in a bad situation. Because, like, I, I've seen it enough times now where I'm, like, I feel down or, like, I feel like something's going the wrong way. Um, and then just, like, realize that, like, you know, the lows are kind of like a benchmark for how high the highs are. Mm. Um and you know, you gotta. I mean, you gotta convince yourself sometimes of like the hope of you know things getting better, and uh, that I guess that's the hard part. But after you have that, you know, it's uh, it's cruising. Mm. So, do you ever find that like in, within the lows are like hidden like lessons? Oh yeah, no, mm-hmm. that's where it's at. It's in the cycles, mm-hmm. right? Like you know, you learn uh, on, on both sides of it. Um, you know, like as you're doing great, and as you're doing some not so great. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I find the same. And like one one thing I really um, e- even like. I was, I was injured at, in a bad snowboarding accident a while back. And even that, you know, despite having like brain damage and seizures, I actually found to be extremely beneficial for me in the long run because I got to sit back and like reevaluate, reflect, stop drinking for a year. And like, so it's almost like all of the downs are like really, really, really well disguised gifts. Yeah. No, I, I actually wrote about this. So I, I like did a reflection ahead of this just to like think about some stuff. And, and I, I was thinking about my, I was in a bike accident as well. And like, you're not as severe as yours. Yeah, it's, it's really scary, man. Um, it uh but it definitely like 
you know, you think about things a little bit differently when you're like, you know, it's all over. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it, it's not, not like a positive experience, but like, yeah, should like, would I want to like erase that? Like, pr- maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> like, like, I don't know. Like would I should do that differently. Like, I don't know. Um, cause you know, I, I think that if not, then, you know, it's like, it's a lesson you learn later. So it's like some lessons are hard, but like you learn something from them. So yeah, you're able to extract some like tangible wisdom or knowledge from it. Yeah. Or at least tell yourself you do. I mean, I, like, <laughs> I mean, I, truthfully, actually, I, I think that's like, that's like one of the biggest, like you want to talk about action items is like, is to, I think that's like a mandate. It's like try to like literally find the value in every single thing, no matter how negative it is. It, yeah. I think that's, um, like a way to like justify like some crappy situations uh, and like at least inspire some hope in yourself to, to pull yourself out of even some like pretty bleak ones. Um, yeah. Yeah. Wise words, man. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so that was looking at the past. Now looking at the present, if I gave you a magic wand, what if anything would you change? Uh, I would hear back from Stanford already. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, yeah. So I mean, I, I, that's the biggest thing on my mind right now is like I, you know, apply to this thing and like it's they're just like I was reading, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe not. Yeah, maybe this is one area where the acceleration would be beneficial for all parties involved. Yeah, or or you could be like, yeah, maybe like Alejandro should learn how to deal with uncertainty better. So mm. you know, it's uh, yeah, you know, call you. So um, that's that's one. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think maybe like striving for a little more balance in my present situation. I mean, I'm something I'm working towards, but like it definitely takes. It's very hard for me to say anything but yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so what ends up happening when you just say yes to everything is you end up doing everything. Mm-hmm. And when you're doing everything, are you doing anything? You know, is is like so scattered brain. Like I spend so much time between the nonprofit and the biking and the Burning Man and the traveling and the family and the friends and the dating and the Stanford application and you know what it's. It's a lot. Yeah. And so I think that like diving deep um, is something that um, that would be yeah, beneficial. You could even move it over a bit if it's uh, if you want to hang out on that oh, side. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. All right, we got to keep it level. Okay. Keep it level yeah. and then we can bring it out. There we go. There it is. And then up. Cool. And then towards you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Minor technical difficulties. Relieved. All right, cool. Uh, so, you're, so you're doing a million things right now. Yeah, I mean, I I think that that like, I guess what I would say is I if I could change something about myself right now, it'd be to be more con- content. Really, mm. it's like I feel like there's this bias towards like you said, bias towards action or bias towards like not like not being satisfied. Is like when you realize that everything can happen, like you kind of almost like lose appreciation for the status quo. If that makes sense, mm. it's. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I feel you on that. It's, it's this interesting, like you were saying balance, right? Where it's, you can't just sit still either. Right. Right. There's like this push. You got to know when to push and when to be pulled. Right. Um, yeah. It's yeah. like a dance. Um, but it sounds like you're doing a lot of pushing. Yeah. It's know? a lot of pushing, a lot of pushing. Yeah. Um, but I enjoy it, but like I, I really want to push myself <laughs> to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to enjoy the pulling. So, you know, if you can figure right. that one out and push on the rope hard enough. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's the other concept. Uh, the the more, you know, esoteric one is like surrender. Right. Right, which yeah. is just kind of like, take me. Yeah. Life, let me, take me wherever. Um, so, so yeah. Um, but also maybe now you're at least seeing what pushing all the time feels like and whether or not you want to continue doing that. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's been incredibly rewarding. Like, it's, you know, I, I wouldn't do it if, like, there wasn't, like, positive feedback, like, constantly mm. for it. Like, every single thing I do is, like, you pretty pretty quick, actually, in terms of, like, how rewarding it is. Um, so, mm. yeah. Cool. Well, then what makes you feel like you want to adjust? Uh, well, so there's a couple. Um, one, it's, it's, it's exhausting. So this is back to the point of, like, enjoying it. It's, like, it's definitely, like, a lot of putting out. Uh, and, and, you know, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of, it's enjoyable, but it's definitely like very tiring. It's like, you know, mm. mine's always racing, always kind of have more to do. Never like, I, I mean, I haven't gone home after work and like, it just like chilled out and I don't know, not, not, not this year at least. And <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, it's it, kind of nice to just like have, have a center there. Um, but I think also there's, um, <laughs> this is, we can talk about this if we want, but it's, uh, I, I see life as like kind of like a uh, time optimization problem. 
And <laughs> so, so if you apply the principles of machine learning towards that, there's the idea <laughs> of, and yeah, sure, yeah, sure, yeah. I mean, the red flag is nothing right. No, and, no, <laughs> and, uh, it's the idea of like explore and exploit. And I feel like the idea of doing something differently just because it's different is like self evident in its value rather than, um, like having a needing needing like a well known reason to go after and do it. It's like I want to change th and this part of my personality just to see how I react to it. Mm. Um, just so I think that the, the experimentation is is important. Got it, got it. So you're you're to to summarize, you're looking for new ways of being just to see if they're better for whatever your needs are. Learning, yeah. Mm. I mean, you know, it's like uh, are you are you a tourist if you've seen the whole world, or are you a tourist if you've lived every life? You know, it's like you, you can you can position your position yourself a variety of ways. Interesting. So your magic wand would be to slow down? Slow down. Um, yeah. Oh, actually, that's, uh, this opens up a whole other area. Sure. Um, yeah. So I think, I think yeah, maybe like just like have different senses of appreciation. Like, you know, like it, it'd be, I think, to like just see the way that, you know, people live differently. Um, I think like artists, for example, like that's just such a profoundly different way of like spending your time day to day than, than like I do. Yeah. And so like learning to have an appreciation for that and like how to contribute in, in a society like that, um, like that would be, you know, like just to see the difference. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just had one on, you know, earlier this week and like her, her life is very different <laughs> in yeah. terms of routine. Right on. Um, <laughs> and you know, but, but actually I'm, I'm seeing a lot of commonalities in terms of like, uh, self building and like reflection and meditation all seem to be common themes literally amongst every single person I've interviewed so far. <laughs> I think it's a common theme amongst your friends. <laughs> well, yeah, it is. Um, but, but I'd say that the thing that's common among them below that is like this mode of, uh, appreciation and drive for self evolution. Yeah. Right. And that I think seems to naturally bring you to meditation. Mm -hmm. Um, like I was talking to, to Chelsea, my girlfriend about this and she's like, yeah, all of my like former fitness gurus or, you know, people you see with like fitness celebrities for lack of a better term have now really gotten into like holistic wellness and right. like meditation and spirituality and all these things. And it's, it's, and she's like, I'm so surprised by it. I'm like, well, but it's all to me the same drive of self improvement, yeah, right. And you realize at a point like this isn't doing it for me entirely, right? Right. Like what? Well, I mean, uh, the, the yeah. beauty of it is that you get it's like self improvement abstracted a bit, right? Like self improvement has stored like uh, up to till now has been like oh like you're not in shape, like oh you're not you know eating this or traveling here, like you know it's. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, now it's like, hey, like sit down and figure it out what you want, <laughs> which, <Yeah. laughs> which is people are like, they're like that's hard. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, so is picking up the weights for the first time. Yeah, right? yeah, no, it, I mean, yeah, yeah and that, that could be part of it. So yeah, and yeah, although I do feel them because, like, for me, I, you know, at, at this point in our lives, like, we're pretty good at a few things, right? And so when I pick up something new and I'm not immediately good oh. at it, I'm like, God damn it, why do I suck at this? Nah, thing? So humbling <laughs> yeah you're just like whoa, whoa, whoa rewind 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 i'm essentially a baby yeah i'm gonna crawl and i'm gonna walk and i'm gonna run right okay yeah. fine yeah, yeah um, I, went, I went to uh i went to Cirque du Soleil and i was looking at these people i'm like you are so much better at this than, <laughs> than like i <laughs> will ever ever so incredibly be uh yeah it's pretty cool to see what people are good at yeah yeah and then you know so yeah you, you do that's another interesting thing you brought up is humbling yourself in order to learn a new thing um and in this particular context it's like learning a new mode of being yeah right it's it's this is a thing that you put everywhere which is how are you as you yeah identity it's uh i'll break it down <laughs> <laughs> yeah well cool um so i'm gonna move on from that uh any sort of like adjusting your path or s situation and um kind of go into like the two ends of the spectrum here could you could you tell me about a moment when you were afraid specifically and then broadly how you deal with fear in your life uh yeah oh god um <laughs> well um I, i'd say i mean like the bike accident i was pretty terrifying mm. um yeah that's what i'm still probably trying to grapple 100 percent on like the idea of mortality uh like mm. the, you know like the idea that like death is a part of life to deal with is uh yeah that's pretty pretty scary um but yeah, I mean, I, it's, you know, some, some things you can think yourself out of, like, and then there's some, some grounding ones that I think are, uh, you know, kind of omnipresent. So like grappling with that is, is uh, an active area of research. So, and how are you approaching that? Just making the most of the time we got here. 
Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, it's, uh, I guess like it'd be tempting to come up with a, with a religious, you know, kind of view on it, but it's, uh, it's not something that like is immediately evident to me. So, hmm. um, yeah, you know, my, my grandfather's getting to 80 something and, and starting to have health issues. So it's like something that I, I see like happening for the first time in my life, which is going to be, uh, yeah, it's gonna be difficult. So hmm. that's scary, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah. And so the, was that the only like perspective you come away with to just make the most well, time I mean, or was there, was there any, like that, how, how did you even approach coming up with that perspective? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know that, that one. I wish I had a cleaner answer for the other, the other well, ones it are, can, it can be messy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's just, uh, you know, make the most, I, it's like, um, like I, one other thing like Ray Dalio, uh, like kind of talks about, he's like, there's three phases to your life. There's like, where you're trying to build yourself up, we're trying to build other people up, and what you're like kind of free of obligations. Mm. And so I think like just kind of like leaning into those and 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 figuring out like, you know, should I be uh, focusing on myself? Should I be focusing on other people? Should I be um, kind of like freeing myself of obligations and and just thinking of life in kind of those frameworks versus like thinking about what happens after that, I guess. So. Mm. And and how do you figure out what slots into where? Yeah, <laughs> day by day, yeah. day by day. Yeah, and then the same, um, I guess what I'm trying to get at is, like, what tool do you use? Is this through your meditation reflection? Oh, yeah, 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 meditation. Like, do you make a list? Like Oh, yeah, lists list for days. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, lists list are cool. Um, but, yeah, so that, that, that's one. I mean, also, like, just uncertainty in general, um, I think, is, is a little bit uh, scary. So, like, with, with Stanford, for example, you know, the idea of, like, in a couple weeks or months, I'll, I'll know, you know, uh, if a life's going to go this way or, or, or that way. Mm. And so just, like... What I did specifically was come up with a plan for both sides. So, like, if I don't get in, some things I'm going to change in my life and mm. invest in myself such that I feel e- both are equally compelling. Um, those have been cool. I mean, also that and, like, uh, when I sign my side, I have a tendency uh, to actually really enjoy, like, just signing up for things and, and like, be like, well, now i got to do it. So, like, for example, like, you know, uh, like, getting involved with this nonprofit, being like, okay, like, now I have 25 students coming in the summer. Like, we're going to have to make a program. It's going to have to be really good. Mm-hmm. And, like, there's no choices. But, like, how am I going to do that? Like, we'll see. Well, you know, we have a couple ideas. Mm-hmm. So. so so if I can distill it, so you you make a plan for either outcome. Yeah. And then, or all outcomes, what you could say. And then you also just find ways to stay focused on the present and kind of keep yourself busy with things that you're passionate about. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, ex- like, execute on a vision for the world that you think is better. Is my my kind of small stuff, yeah, yeah. You know, (laughs) too big. (laughs) Yeah, well, that's what this is too. So yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, that's that's why I appreciate. I love having such creative friends. It's so cool. Yeah, cool. Um, so that's good. So there's there's a couple actionable things there. Um, how about on the other side of the coin? Can you tell me about a moment of great inspiration? Oh god. And then broadly, how inspiration shows up in your life? Yeah. Okay. Um, so so many. Um, so I think like one of them was definitely, uh, getting this, this, this job. I, I mean like the idea of being a data scientist or even working in tech, um, it felt like far away, even, uh, considering my background. And so like to go from a place where I was questioning what I was going to be doing with my life to a place where like, I mean, I was in charge of, uh, a driver onboarding, uh, for Lyft, which is you know, $500 million a year. And so like to have that responsibility so young and so early in my career with literally no experience prior to that. Except for you know, uh, marginally related stuff, it was was like really confidence building. So, oh, you trust me, okay, mm. you know. And then like learning to trust yourself through the trust of others was was really cool. Um, and that's like something I'm trying to like pass on with Destin for X of like the idea of like no, like we trust you, like mm. you trust yourself and, and like feeling empowered. Mm. Um, I think uh, like vulnerability and creativity are like another huge source of inspiration for me. Mm. Um, like, so, I mean, I, I, I really love, like, stand-up comedy, for example, or, like, honestly, any, any creative outlet. Mm. Things where people are putting themselves out there, like, to the public. And, mm-hmm. um, like, I mean, going to Burning Man was uh, incredible. Yeah. Uh, like, just to be like, whoa, like, that you came up with this and you're doing this? Like, this is definitely 100% you, you know? And, like, <laughs> the fact that people were willing to be so exposed in terms of, like, not following any convention and just being truly themselves, like, that, to me, I think is the purest form of living. So pretty inspiring to see people pursue that. Mm. And then how does that, like, when, when you were inspired, you know, my, again, my two favorite words, so what? Yeah. So what? Yeah. I mean, you start, start questioning yourself and like, mm. I, I think like that's, that's what I've been doing since is, is like, uh, so with, you know, uh, with the career stuff, like I got involved with the nonprofit and like, 
you know, run a nonprofit kind of focused on, on delivering that same impact towards uh, students from underprivileged backgrounds. Uh, on the creative side, like, I mean, took leadership on the, on the camp uh, component and try to like bring that up and like create more spaces where I think people can express themselves. Like, you know, you've played a couple of my parties. I, I think that like get, getting more formats of that, like, I think that's like one thing I want to push myself to do is like, just to like just create more spaces for different types of, of expression. Mm -hmm. I think that like we do a great job on like, Music, <laughs> we really got that one down. <laughs> like we killed it. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. That was awesome. Yeah, uh, and so um, yeah, I think like creating more places for that to happen, and also like pushing myself to to do it. Like I, I think that like I, if I look at the way I spend my time, there's so there's there's fewer creative outlets that are like personally at like risk. I'm not putting myself at risk. Um, so I think that coming up with some of those is also a lot of fun. Mm, cool. So, you, so you draw inspiration from people who are like deep in their self-expression, right? And then makes you realize like you want to build spaces and containers for yeah, that I mean, expression. yeah, I think I think like the the main thing is like I feel like I approach things with such extreme like logic and and um, like analytical rigor that mm. it it leaves little room for like frivolousness and joy, which is like <laughs> I, I I've learned to appreciate it's like important for sure in terms of because uh, I mean like if I look at the things that I value most, right? It's like not you know always the person who's has like the most thoughtful plan. It's also like the most outgoing or empathetic or creative or mm. yeah something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's a really cool point. So it's like you're looking at the people who you admire, and you're seeing in them what traits do I admire. Right, and then you're using that to look inwards and say, "These are the ones I want to develop for myself." Right, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, if I, you know, it's it's uh, like the the uh, exhibit in Oakland. It's like no no uh, no spectators, right? So it's like, yeah, uh, fucking participate. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a little, uh, you know, a, a, another way of saying that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll say that. <laughs> Well, cool. That that also seems like a good framework for people. It's like, all right, look at who you really admire and try to figure out well, why do you admire them? Like, what are the parts of them that you're looking at? And you're like, I like that. Yeah. I want to do that. Right. Right. Yeah. It's and it, it's crazy because it's, uh, yeah. It's it's like really, it's like it's coming purely from within. So it's like it's like you know, uh, people talk about like great ideas. I think like some of the greatest ideas are like just creative forms of expression. Yeah, for sure. Um, have you had any like particular like major creative things just like bolt in your brain uh, light bulb moments? Yeah, I mean, I, I I've been I focus a lot on like experiential design. I think that like I, there's a lot of ideas that if I had the right space for it would like create some some pretty great opportunities for people to come together. And I, I'm starting to explore that uh, as mm. as we've done together. But um, that's more like in the parting sense. I think that like moving it towards less of that. Mm. But even that even that that feels like a platform more than it does like a personal type of expression. Mm. Well, I kind of want to get into not like the, sorry, that maybe phrase yeah. it wrong, like not the actual what, but like the how, to, what's that right. process like when, like, are you, are you sitting under a tree when that happens oh. when the idea comes to you? Like, well, I mean, I, I yeah, yeah. I mean, I haven't had any, like, I guess it, it's also, yeah, it's, it's just like seeing other people and being like, oh, I like this particular part, like be nuanced, I guess, in, in the liking of something. <laughs> be like, mm. you know, I, I have, uh, I mean, like, okay, I don't even have to go that far. Like friends who like cars, right? And I have friends who like, I have a friend who's like, oh, I just like this car broadly. And I have like you who can like list out every single detail of the entire thing and like be like, this one I really like. I really like this engine valve or whatever. <laughs> and but like and then you can pick that and like pick it together with this other thing, this very nuanced thing that you've liked over here and like found find a way to like bring the ideas uh, of them together. Mm. Um, so I think it's like it's like basically remixing, uh, being nuanced, finding like particular parts of things that you like and then using that to mash together your own idea. Yeah. Wow. That's a really good way of putting it, man. And like also an approach that I take to things as, as you just described. And in general, like I've noticed that at work and like everywhere else in life, it's kind of yeah. like a, you know, the, the truth is somewhere in the middle of all these things. Right. right. But in order to do so, you have to see it clearly first and foremost. So you have to look at something honestly or as honestly as you possibly can, like yeah. eliminate as yeah. much bias as you can. Right. Which is tricky. Oh, it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it seems pretty doable, I would say. So like get a clear view of the thing and then like really, really. And I think this is where um, you actually utilize your intuition a lot because you don't like something generally because it's like a number or whatever. Right. You, you like it because it, it, it resonates with you. Right. You feel kind of pulled to it. Right. So, so there's a cool like head heart balance. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess like to, to go uh, full circle with it, I think that like the, the creative expressions that I think are most 
interesting and inspiring uh, are those which are like pure expressions of joy. Like mm. I think that like people who are doing things because they just freaking love them. Mm. Like that's, I mean, that, that's the, what, what more inspiration could you ask for? And uh, so in, in order to like create that yourself, you're going to want to map out like what makes you the happiest, brings you the most joy, and then kind of like remix them together into like, like you said, really similar to this podcast, right? You're making like a list of points of different areas that you like and then coming up with where you sit in with, in, with them. And so th- I think it's something some, some similar like that. That's cool. This is, this is great because like I, this is all about trying to give people like um, a way out or towards what they want. Right. Um, and I think that's a really that's a really good framework, right? It's like look at something truthfully, figure out the bits that you like and don't like, and maybe your truth that you like lies somewhere in the middle. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it's it's a pleasure to be working on like that second part. I think more, more so mm-hmm. now. I feel like the last couple of years I've spent like trying to unbias myself, uh, and and so it's been cool to like start collecting some of those more joyous data points because they're <laughs> joyous data points. <laughs> <laughs> like data scientists for sure. <laughs> Hey, hey, this, this is all this is all good stuff, man. I love it. Yeah, we're trying. Well, that's the whole point of this is like get perspective, such broad perspectives, right? Because we've got like marketers, musicians, like oh, cool. plant medicine facilitators, like and now data scientists, and like so we're creating a really broad spectrum of things. Yeah. And, you know what I'm hoping is that there's some commonalities, and there already have been commonalities that pop out in the, that truth in the middle concept, right? Yeah. Um. So hopefully we'll we'll come up with a lot of stuff. Um, but cool. So, all right. We're going to move on from the life path analysis area and kind of get into this attributes um, and like self building area where we get to really find out like how well do you know yourself? How do you even get to know yourself? Um, and, you know, I'd like to start generally with which character traits do you attribute to your success? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, my two favorite are definitely uh, my curiosity uh, and thoughtfulness. I mm. think like I'm. I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I don't really get satisfied not knowing how things work. And like, I mean that not just in terms of like technical things, it's like, like why like societies organize them, themselves the way they do, you know, like why do I like people feel the way they do? Um, and that kind of, you know, goes internal as well. Um, and I, that, that's led me to like come up with a bunch of like unexpected learnings uh, about really every part of my life. So um, that's cool. And then like thoughtfulness, I guess like, kind of related to that. It's like the willingness to like follow that curiosity a little bit further. Um, and also being a little more meticulous with, uh, everything. Mm. <laughs> cool. And then which of those and maybe some others came naturally to you and like, which did you have to develop? Yeah. Uh, I think those two, those two came naturally, but I think, um, the, well, not necessarily actually, I think that, like some of the curiosity, like the scope of the curiosity changed, uh, over time. And it's definitely like broadened. Like now at this point, I'm just like, you know, questioning everything, which, which I, I think is actually, <laughs> It's a pretty good, pretty good way to spend your time. Um, the ones yeah. that didn't come super easily, I think, are like empathy, uh, vulnerability. Um, mm. I spent a lot of time uh, earlier in my childhood, like kind of building, like, like I said, uh, almost like arrogance uh, over over some certain parts of my my identity. So, um, yeah, like leaning into that, like ask, like really genuinely, like for like pushing myself to understand how somebody's feeling, uh, mm. like end to end. Is, yeah. Uh, it's, it's still, you know, pretty difficult for me. So, um, enjoy pushing myself on that. Mm. And then how do you deconstruct that old point of view? Oh God. Um, yeah, I, I mean the vulnerability component is, is, is like pretty massive there. Like the ability to like walk away from, so just to can you, can you clarify the question a little bit. Just to yeah. Yeah. So you, well, I, I meant more in like you saying like you were almost like arrogant oh, before yeah. and like, how do you deconstruct that? How do you realize like, oh shit, this needs to change. Yeah. <laughs> and then how do you right i mean yeah it, so yeah. i mean like the, to be specific like i'm talking about like i mean i grew up in miami right where like people go out they party you know the club and like like they, they to the extent at least when i was growing up there like the extent they put people on pedestals for like you know doing uh, extravagant things is mm-hmm. and then new york is you know, it's not too far off especially in finance it's like this like uh, exhaustion as a status symbol like <laughs> and like so i i just felt like oh like you're not like you, i'm better than you like i i, I look how hard i've worked <laughs> or like yeah. Like how much I partied and, and I don't know, at some point you, and I think this is what came with the quietness of, of being unemployed for a couple of months was like realizing like, oh, well, what, 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 you know, what does that leave you with at the end of the day? You know, a um, hangover. Yeah. Hangover, a <laughs> couple, couple few bucks less and, uh, yeah, no, no real meaningful connection. So I think that like, mm. you know, uh, yeah, like kind of the, the strive to feel like connected, uh, mm. definitely like motivated me. Mm-hmm. 
And then what, so, so that's your motivations. Like what happened next? Like, so you've realized I want to shift this thing. How do you go about it? Um, I mean, this is like learning what people care about. Uh, and I think that this is actually, it's a great exercise, right? Cause like if you're, you're stuck in like some perception of yourself, uh, kind of taking a step back and under- asking yourself like what other people care about, what you care about, um, it, it quickly leads to what we were just discussing of like, of trying to find like joy and like map it out and understand what, what brings it. Mm. Um, so I guess like focusing on like positive on positivity is probably a big one is like, you know, really, like I said, try to focus on, on learning what you can out of every situation, like find some positive spin with which to see, uh, anything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So it's, it's like that, um, that same process from before of like, you really need to self inquire, sit still somewhere quiet, right? Look inward and be like, what do I really feel about this thing? Right. Yeah. And like you questioning the assumptions, like mm-hmm. I, I, I love to find like, uh, like where, like there's a gut reaction, like where's something you're like, <laughs> like, I just, mm. I feel this strongly about this. And it's like, why, you know, it's like trying to figure out specifically what, what is that coming from? Um, yeah, no, that, that helps. Yeah. And do you find that process like easy, no. difficult? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> How does it feel at first? Yeah. It's like, I mean, it's wildly unsettling, uh, <laughs> like, okay. like profoundly and incredibly disorienting. Um, but it's like, it's pretty cool to come out of it and be like, Hey, look, I did that, which, mm. um, you know, people talk about, um, is it bravery or courage. It comes, I think it's courage that comes from the word of like telling your full story. It's it's something around. I don't know, it's read in a book, but basically it says it says like you know courage is like being true to yourself and like sharing your true authenticity, something like that. And uh, yeah, I mean it, like there's nothing more brave than uh, you know expressing yourself, being yourself. So true that man. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, that that's a crazy process. And like one of my favorite thinkers has a, a saying where he's like, people really don't like being poked in the axioms. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> and now you're doing it to yourself <laughs> like why what am i doing here <laughs> um and, and and one note i do want to bring up for uh you know for the audience is that like as you are deconstructing yourself you know it, when one fear you might have which i have had is how can i be sure i'm going to reconstruct myself in the right way um and i think that at least what i found is that you can actually really really trust that you underneath everything that you have built up of your sense of identity is kind of this big core ball of love and just following that and letting it do its thing unhindered will build yourself back up in a way that is optimal for you and whatever situation you're in. So it's like, trust yourself. You can do this. It's going to be difficult. Right. Like wildly unsettling is a good way of putting it. (laughs) Yeah. But, but you know, you can do this and, and people have, and like, that's what we're looking to show here as well as like, you know, that's also, and this is the fourth one I filmed and like everyone, basically everyone I've talked to has done this. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's this like symbol of like rebirth, right. Is you, you're like, wait a second, is this really who I am? And like, and you can do it. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. I, I've had the, the pleasure of like going through that exercise a couple of times with my, uh, my nonprofit folks. And, uh, it's, it's super like empowering to like see somebody who is like willing to, I don't know, push themselves and question and like, I don't, I don't know. I, I, have a, I have a mentee who was telling me, he's like, yeah, like I'm doubting like every, uh, I don't know, every decision I've made, like, well, how did I get here? Why did I do this? And then like helping them like reconstruct and be like, no, like here's the values that you've been leaning on. Like, it's, it's a great process. Mm. So I'm happy to see you're uh, encouraging people to do it. Yeah. And you just, I, I, thank you. And I want to talk about, you just mentioned like seeing the values you're leaning on. Like, okay, what's the process you walk through with that mentee? Oh yeah. Cause, um, Cause this might, this might be useful to people. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, so, I mean, I, I think it's, it's again, starting off with like understanding like what makes, what, what, what makes you happy uh, again. And, um, and like working from there to turn that into a time like allocation things like how how are you spending your time because that's all you have in in terms of like making yourself happier um and so with him in particular he was you know he's he's gone to harvard he had a very typical like in imposter syndrome of like oh i was the mistake you know and Mm. i'm like this is the education like process the process is to like doubt everything and like to learn and to like teach yourself and and progress and master it and like that's that is what's happening and that's expected Mm. so um yeah just make 
basically providing with him in this case was like another point of reference. Um, somebody who's has a little more experience and has like definitely gone through similar struggles. Um, I think, I think I guess the, the main point here is like sometimes like you got to step out of your own perspective. Um, it's not always easy to do that uh, without reaching out to somebody. Mm. So like I think having conversations like this and like being open about those doubts um, is a great way to like uh, start down the path of, of considering them. Yeah, that's yeah. I, I find the same, man. Um, I'm generally fiercely independent, or at least I have been up till recently. And like it, leaning on other people, especially if you're fortunate enough to have intelligent and caring people in your life, is not something to be ashamed of, and and should be used. And I think if more of that happened mutually between people, we'd all be better off. Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm I'm uh, I'm so proud of uh, of, I guess like you know. The people you have in your life are, are so much of your life, um, and I think that this is just another way to like bring them even closer. So yeah, for sure, absolutely, man, cool. Um, so <laughs> we were like, that was like one question in this area, <laughs> <laughs> two. Um, cool. So we're gonna get into like uh, strengths. So and then we'll talk about weak weaknesses next. But how did you discover your strengths? Um, how did I? I mean, it, it's. Hmm. Not, not, not too sure, actually. I, I, I think I just, uh, for, for me, a lot of it has been like academic, at least that's like what I, what I see it as is like, uh, I, I think I, I pick up a lot of things, uh, quickly. And so mm. I, I've gotten feedback on that, uh, throughout my life, which, um, was cool, but, you know, started to learn how to exploit them a little bit more specifically, um, mm. recently, which is, which has been fun. So, so feedback from other people. Yeah. Feedback from other people. Um, I think it's, it's also like what uh if you look at like the the return function on it so like uh, <laughs> so no, seriously though it's like it's like what uh, allows you to exert the le the least amount of effort for the most amount of joy hmm. um mm -hmm. and i think that like you know leaning on leaning on my 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 thoughtfulness is is, is got me there uh, sometimes so hmm. yeah cool so so feedback and then self-awareness figuring out what brings you joy and then having a somewhat understanding of the effort required to generate it right right yeah. Cool. There's the components, people. Um, and then on the flip side, how do you learn about shortcomings or flaws? <sighs> yeah, uh, those those are those are definitely the hard ones. I think sometimes it takes like, you know, there's easy ones. There's like, you know, I can say like I'm not a good like gymnast, right? Like that's pretty pretty <laughs> simple. But but you could go you know progressively harder. And there's like things like like uh, like how to like be a better like lover, how to like you know relate closer with people. Uh, and I think that's just got to live it, which is why I was saying, like, when I change anything in my life is like, like maybe not had to do those errors so many times. Yeah. But I can't think of a way to do that without like removing the life component of it. <laughs> so <laughs> it's uh, tricky like that. I mean, yeah, reflect, <laughs> reflect, I think helps a lot. Like think about like you said, unbiased. Um, yeah. Unbiased, unbiasing yourself, uh, being honest with yourself. Um, yeah, like noticing when you're putting up resistance, I think is, is like, like, I mean, I, for example, at work whenever, I mean, actually not even work, just in general, whenever I get any sort of like constructive feedback uh, in terms of like how I could have done something differently, like my gut reaction is always just like, no, like I did it perfectly <laughs> and you're wrong and here's why. Yeah. And, and like, then like it takes a couple seconds to like, oh, yeah, no, I was wrong, but. <laughs> uh, and I, yeah. I think like learning to appreciate those moments, um, it's almost like, like you're literally the only person who has to gain from them. So I, I've, I've made like a, uh, I've like learned to like reward myself for it, you know, mm -hmm. be like, Oh, like, Oh, look, I feel good for finding this one area where I can do better. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, like l learning to enjoy that, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tricky one, man. Cause I, I'm the same way. Yeah, of course. Your initial reaction is. No, mm -mm. no, you don't know shit. You don't even know me. <laughs> Who do you think you are? How do you do this? <laughs> and you sit back and you really look at it and you're like, okay. Yeah. And this is where that empathy comes in because right. you got to be like, okay, from their perspective, what parts of that, like what is making them say that? You yeah. know, and like everyone always does have their own individual distortions that they contribute to the situation, whatever it might have been. But usually there's some sort of truth in there and it's a really it's really beneficial for you. And also I would say everybody else in your life for you to ferret those things out mm -hmm. and then figure out how you can address them. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, so I, I think that one thing that I actually um, helped me in reflection whatnot was actually a lot about um, kind of the skill set you look for in going from like being an individual contributor to a manager. Mm. Um, so like questions about like how do you deal with conflicts? Like you can think of that in the workplace. You can think of it in like, like such an incredibly broad set of situations. Yeah. And so like m- managing disagreements, I realized like I would give myself an F across like the board uh, mm. on many, many parts of that thing. So like looking back and reflecting like, okay, how can I better do this? Um, and so like the idea of making sure that the context is the same, making sure that like the perspectives and values and desired outcomes are all aligned, um, you know, is, is, is like a good place to start. Um, yeah, like expectation setting. I think that like that translates well to like communication and and mm-hmm. and kind of that's another weakness point of mine for a while was like I would avoid saying things that I wouldn't want to say because I didn't know if the reaction was great. So mm-hmm. I think like just being more clear about those and more honest with myself and others about how I'm feeling is uh, it's been you know a great exercise. Mm. Cool. That's that's a lot uh, to take in <laughs> and and you know just I guess I want to summarize this for people. Feeling resistance to any of these types of feedback is normal. Um, however, it is to your benefit and everyone else's to dive into it anyway yeah. um, and see how much of it is true and not. Because mm-hmm. I found, at least for me, 100% of the time, some part of it some is of true. Some of it is true. Always. Yeah. And, and you will come out stronger as a result. Um, yeah. And yeah. So learn about your weaknesses. Take, take the time to hear them, even if you're initially resistant. And then address them in whatever way is appropriate for the situation. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, so we kind of already touched. The next question is like something or you know what's something keeping you up at night right now, and how are you dealing with it? But we talked about Stanford. Yeah, Stanford, Stanford is definitely up there. Um, what else? Yeah, I mean, also like not Stanford was like the other one was like I was thinking about. I mean, so I guess like the idea was like if I go to Stanford, right? Like it'd be a material shift in how I spend my time, mm. um, and like the, the things I seek and like get enjoyment from. So, you know, reallocating them. And then also like if I don't, like what does that mean for like how I feel about uh, the rest of my life kind of things. Mm-hmm. Cool. And then, and so you're in, just to re, uh, recap what you said. So you're grappling with it by creating an action plan for either scenario. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, basically my specifically, I, I like made uh, like a s- list of things that I'm going to do on the day that I get, well, starting the day I get in or I don't get in. Um, and then, you know, it's just, it's easier to like feel like, uh, what is being decided is like, which of these paths is being taken, not necessarily like here's an option versus not an option. Mm. It's like both options are sweet. Like mm-hmm. which one is it going to be? Yeah. That's a good way of putting it. And there's that positivity again, right? It's like, yeah, you know, there, there, I assume would still be a, you know, emotional toll taken if you didn't get it but then at least you have this other positive side made readily apparent to you which might not be so clear if you're in that you know state right Right. i mean i i I think i think uh this one thing i like i definitely have appreciated like going through harvard was that like the the admissions for these things actually like even running admissions for destined for x uh like it's 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 truly arbitrary at some point like it's you know like if they want a trombone player they're gonna get a trombone player instead of like the latin data scientists so it's like you know it's and, and like with Dustin for x like you know we had we had last year we had 16 spots and we had 56 applications and like if you're gonna tell me that i i could possibly discern which student is gonna be the, gonna get the most value out of this um, accurately, you know, it's, it's, it's just, there's just no way. Um, mm. and so we try our best and like, that's why, like, if I don't get in, like, um, you know, I, I would obviously like appreciate the opportunity and I think it'd be a lot of fun. Um, but like have learned to kind of remove that, uh, that outcome from like digging my own self-worth. So. Yeah. This is another concept that was brought up in the other ones too, which is removing your attachment to the outcome Yeah, as best you can. So yeah, I actually, so the, maybe this is what I mean about like the altruism thing. It's like more like it's almost like nihilistic. It's like mm. I'm just gonna like try my best, and I, you know, that's what I did with the application, for example, put up my best numbers and like shoot for it. But like if it doesn't happen, like whatever. And I feel like almost having like that investment in the expo- like almost like being exposed emotionally to like the outcomes is is like maybe that's important, but you know, maybe not. Mm. So it's a risk. It's a risk involved with it. So mm-hmm. true that. Well, well, cool. Well, I mean, it sounds like you're, you're dealing with it in 
yeah. what works like a really or what looks like it works like in a really good way for you. Yeah. Um, I then want to get into another vulnerable area, which is, you know, if well, do you ever find yourself feeling down or looking for excuses? And if so, how do you deal with that? Yeah, I mean, I, I felt down earlier this week, you know, and uh, I, I it's, it's tough. Um, yeah, I mean, I think like right now, what I'm trying to do uh, is, is like, I, I just feel, um, I guess most recently was, was like this feeling of always needing more, like not ever being s- um, satisfied. Um, and it, it, it was, you know, kind of, um, kind of circular in that, right? It's like you do more and then like, you know, you just want to keep on, keep on pushing it. Like Destin for X, right? Like, you know, this, this altruism thing, I love it and it's fantastic, but it's like at some point, like, you know, can't like without dedicating your entire life to these things, like, you know, how, how, how do you be content with like what you've done? Mm. Um, or at least patient <laughs> maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think that it's, um, like one exercise I've done is just like reflected and, and appreciated the last couple of hours, just like, or, you know, days and just written down like very specific interactions or like moments or things that I saw just to, um, appreciate the situation I'm in currently. Uh, and then with that appreciation, like continue on what I was doing, basically back to the whole doing more thing, but, um, just learning that like, I can probably do more and, <laughs> yeah. and appreciate <laughs> this yeah. moment. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they're mutually exclusive, man. Yeah. Um, for sure. And that's a cool other action point, um, which is, and this aligns to, you know, another concept is called gratitude meditations, which is just figure out what you're grateful for. Like sit down for a few minutes, journal it, think on it, whatever. But you know, I think if you, if you look for it, you'll find them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually, um, I think, I think you might have probably gone into one of these in the abundance meditation. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. I'm, uh, I, I got my, my mom and grandmother involved in them too. And like, they're, they're doing it, but yeah, like the, the reflection, like uh, one of the exercises is writing down, um, the, a list of 50 people who have influenced you positively. And like you do like 10, like no problem, you know, 20, 30. And then like, you're like, all right, 40, whoa, like 50, and you're like kind of really, you know, thinking through all the things you appreciate. And it's, it's incredible to, See, like now, the beauty of it is, is because I went through the exercise. Like, I've been, I've, I'm now like seventy or eighty. Like, because I've just been like throughout my day, been popping in. Like, oh, actually, I really appreciate that, you know. And like, yeah. Um. So it's like, it, you know, the idea of training yourself to be happy is, is, uh, I think people just assume that, like, oh, I'm like alive, so I should just like know how to do that. So I think investing in it and like giving yourself a framework, like you're doing here, is, uh, is really important. Mm. Yeah. Talk about time part- partitioning, right? It's yeah. like. Yeah, you think, oh, because I'm here, I, I'm doing that, but you're not like spending the right. time to do that. Like, why? Like, why would why would that happen naturally, right? Like, it's it, it almost kind of naive to think it would. So yeah, yeah. I mean, we're we're primarily fear based creatures. Like, that's how we like we were monkeys getting eaten by snakes. Like, that's how we survived. Was like be aware of the threat and run or fight. Right. Like, right. that's our default mode network in the brain, and so. That gratitude is nowhere in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's not. There's no reflection. Like <laughs> so that that's what we got to use our higher thinking for. Um, cool. So so that helps. You know, gets you out of get you out of those funks. Right. Um, yeah. I, so it, it almost sounds like it adds perspective. Like because at least for me, when I'm feeling down, I get so sucked into. I'm like, that's all there is. There's just down. Da, 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 da. And then you're like, wait a second. But there's also this entirely opposite perspective. Right all my life and you're like, Oh wait. And then you find yourself somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. uh, yeah. The irrational exuberance and irrational, like opposite of that, like irrational depression. <laughs> almost <laughs> like, yeah, it, it, does, it definitely can, can do both. And I think that like, it's just like, I feel what ha- ends up happening is that like when I'm in those moments of, uh, like somewhere between maybe not taking enough time to like reflect and acknowledge and appreciate that versus like trying to seek to get like back up onto like this big thing. Like, Oh, I had this huge trip planned. Like, mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, like this will happen for sure. But I think that like learning to appreciate the medians is also important. Yeah, totally. Cool. Um, and then on the flip side, can you tell me about a recent time you were brave or took a big risk? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I think I think coming out here was, was pretty cool. Uh, I, I was really, ex- really excited about doing this. Um, that's one. I mean, I think also... Um, so for, like I mentioned personally, like a, a lot of my identity has been in, um, in like academia and like thinking and, and all these things. And like, so the process of applying to Stanford was, uh, a little trying for me, like 
in terms of like, I want to put it like resistance, like I was really resisting like taking the GRE or even studying for it because I, I took one practice test and I got like below the average on like the verbal mm. section and like you know like okay on the on the quant and uh, it was like I was like oh like this test is stupid like I'm gonna doubt myself and and like not do it mm. um, and so I think like willing to like go and try to take it without uh, and like maybe not doing as well like that was uh, definitely a risk. Um, also, I took I took it on my birthday, <laughs> which, <laughs> so right. it's like I definitely could have like very easily just ruined my birthday. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that, that's that's some of it. Um, I think like more broadly speaking, like taking this job, like I I, I you know was I, I had no I no, I took one class you know data science, but like besides that, I had no real experience uh, professionally doing it, and to be trusted with like hundreds of millions of dollars really was was uh, pretty pretty cool, uh, but also like. You know, uh, putting myself out there without doing it. I mean, I, I've signed up for multiple talks now. Like, I gave, uh, I got invited to give a speech at my high school back in November. Uh, this first public speaking event I did, and uh, yeah, I mean, like, I signed up with no regard for what I was going to say. <laughs> and so, like, to stand up in front of people and like give them advice was was uh, definitely a cool cool challenge for me. Hmm. Um, next, the, the way I want to be brave next, I really want to push myself to do to do stand up. I think that it would be it's like, uh, it's like so vulnerable in that it's like, here's a mic, be funny, you know? <laughs> 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 and so the expectations are like here and it's like, you can only miss really. <laughs> yeah. <most of> the <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah. That, that is crazy brave. Yeah. I think so. that. So. Like hats off to all the people who do it, even if they're not funny. Yeah. I, like, I, I think, I, honestly, I think those are the, those are the bravest people. It's like, you're not funny at all. And they know, they know for sure. Like, <laughs> like you can tell, like you can read a crowd at least, you know? I hope. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe, not. <laughs> maybe they can't. <laughs> I, I, I killed it. <laughs> yeah. These crowds are just, they're just idiots. They don't get comedy. My sense of humor is too highbrow for them. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. Head up ass guy. Um, beautiful. Cool. Also, are we having fun yet? Yeah. This is fun. Digging this? Yeah. Me too. It's really cool. It's really cool. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Me too. This is, this is great. Um, and I, I hope our audience is also enjoying it as much. I think they will be. Um, so cool. I want to move on to, um, the section about meaning and fulfillment. Uh, so this is where we go. At, I mean, we've already been like super deep all over the place, but you know, let's, let's just really go at the core issue. Um, starting with like, you know, where are you now in your journey? Like, are we there yet? Uh, and yeah, right, uh, there you go. That was an easy yeah, note. Yeah. And do you have a destination in mind? Uh, I mean, I, 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 not really. I mean, it's more of like a, like a, a direction more than a, more than a location, you mm. know? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I really want to see a world where everybody has equal opportunities to, or feels, or sorry, I guess clear, the clearest thing would be a world where everybody feels empowered to make the world what they want. Um, mm. or, or to achieve what they want or do what they want. And, um, so yeah, I, I think that like that, that's what I want to do is, is to continue investing in that. Um, I'm doing, you know, the nonprofit work I'm doing, but, um, just trying to find more ways to like empower people really. Mm. Um, I don't think there's an, there's, you can never do enough of that really. So True. yeah, I'm going to take this second to, yeah. and I haven't told you about this yet, but I'll do it here. Um, to plug this new political movement, um, a few dear friends of mine, and I think you met some of them too, are starting called One Nation, which is all about that. It's all about how do we build a nation that is super empowering to the individual and highlights individual liberties um, and you know allows people to do what they really want to do. Right. Um, and doing so through a truth-finding process, which is exactly like we've been talking about that you're applying on your own life already, which is look at the situation with unbiased eyes, take into account all the different perspectives and find whatever truth there is in the middle. Right. That would create an all win situation for everybody. Right. Um, so I just want to say there's another thing you're saying that you're looking for something to invest in. Yeah, I just did. Um, but anyway, anyway, I also want to plug that for the audience as well. Um, I'm super excited by it. It's run by like extremely smart, very hard forward people. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so yeah, so there are tangible ways to do this now is what I'm learning. Um, yeah. But, but cool. Um, and then, but now for you personally, like, do you always feel like you're on the right path towards that? Um, not, I mean, like not always, I guess it's like, it's, it's a hard to take a, you know, life, uh, long perspective on, on a day, you know, it's like, 
some days obviously like you're more in the weeds of like this particular thing is, is taking up a lot of my mental energy or, or heart energy. Mm. And, and so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I like to think that like in, in broad strokes going in that direction, um, I think the way that I'm spending my time, spending my money is, is kind of trying to align with that. Um, but you know, you can always do more, uh, sometimes, but like the question is, you know, this is what I was saying before. It was like, is doing more the right thing to do? Mm. Um, you know, so I think sometimes I'm just like trying to like take the pace, uh, and make sure it's everything all settled in, you know. Mm. W- would you say like? Well, I guess let me let me just ask broadly, since we're we are here to guide kind of mm-hmm. you know this. I, I have this feeling that many people are lost right now, and the goal of this podcast is to guide them through life. And so, where is a point where you feel lost, and how do you recognize when that is? Uh, yeah. I I guess it's like when I'm breaking my sense of identity like when i remember like mm. i'm doing something that i expect or didn't expect myself to to, to the situation to be in. that's one of my favorite parts about burning man it's like you know it's like you just like, walk into a camp and you're like all of a sudden a kumbaya circle with like a bunch of people like you know sharing and like getting out there and, and uh um i don't know, like out of, out of out of my element mm. um but like i i guess yeah whenever whenever your heart's racing you know probably probably good good uh good way to uh to measure it mm. And then gen- generally speaking, like maybe outside of like the Burning Man context and more in like the, like what was like a recent time you were questioning your identity? Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I think the stamp and application has been, has been pretty big for that. <laughs> uh, yeah. In, in more ways than one, but, um, yeah, that I, I think also like the nonprofit stuff is, uh, is, is pretty incredible. Like how, uh, diverse some backgrounds are, um, especially relative to mine. It, it's, it, it, it makes me like question like other decisions. Like if I've made a lifelong set of decisions um, based on the context that I had and, and, and the, the way I, that I grew up, like how would those decisions have been differently, done differently uh, under other people's context? Mm. Uh, and so like reevaluating my life under the framework of like other people's lenses has, has shed a lot of uh, insight and then like made me question be like, oh, is that really who I want to be? Mm. Um, yeah. So, you know, basically like taking less things for granted. For yeah. Sure. Cool. And then on the opposite side, when do you feel most found? Most found. Oh gosh. So many, so many, there's a, there's a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like where do you feel most fulfilled? Um, I mean like, I, I guess like when I, I don't know, like you do something and you've you seen somebody else smile, like it's, 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 like somebody else like feels great because of something you did. That's, mm. I mean, what, you know, what more connection or groundedness or, uh, kind of like reaffirming that you're doing the right thing, uh, than that. So like, that's honestly why I love like throwing some of these, these parties is cause like you walk around and like, <laughs> it was, it's pretty funny. I, I, I saw some people like just like smiling. I saw, I overheard some group, some group was like, Oh, who's that Alejandro guy? Like <laughs> I introduced myself and like, Oh my God, this party's great. Like I've made so many friends. This is great. And, so it meant, uh, you know, like things like that mean a lot, like the nonprofit. And when I, I see students, like, I mean, I screenshotted so many text messages, but they're like, they're like, Alejandro, like I got through, um, like one of the roughest weeks of my life, uh, because of like the meditations that you recommended or, um, you know, like the, the call that you recommended me to make to, to my family to just tell them that I appreciate them. Like that mm-hmm. helped me, uh, appreciate more parts of my life. And, and, and so I think like that, that's really what it is, is like, mm. I mean, you're actually exactly what you're doing in terms of like making frameworks for actionable happiness, or like <laughs> learning yourself or whatever's going on here. Yeah. But then that, that, that you also are mentioning that direct feedback moment, like person to person, face to face. Yeah. Seems to be important. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, yeah, it's, 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 uh, yeah, we questioned for at one point, wanted to go, um, to take Desert for X to like an online program, uh, and, and, and do that. But you know, it, it feels like so much of the human touch is, is left, uh, left out. So yeah, I, I definitely think that's important to, uh, to invest in that kind of one-on-one. Mm. I mean, that's, that's when you feel though, like for your personally, yeah. you feel most found when you have that. Oh yeah. When it, it's like, a, I mean, like when you can directly see human happiness. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I love that when you let that like light bulb moment. Yeah. You're like, Oh yeah, this is it. This yeah. is it. Cool. And I'll just take a second. Also, thank you for that. My parents are there. They loved it too. Oh right, that's so right. You, you yeah, you made this like con- 
you know, uh-huh. for, for the audience's context, Alejandro loves organizing events and parties, and he threw an amazing one with, you know, 200 friends, and, you know, it was just a container of, like, so much joy <laughs> and happiness that, um, yeah, it was phenomenal. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad, it was cool. I love when people bring uh, bring family and, like, people who are not part of the scene into it so that it's, uh, you know, kind of opening up, like, the way we, we do this thing. Yeah, and my dad hates parties, and he loved that, so. <laughs> 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 well, cool. Um, so, Great. Um, I also want to talk about, uh, you know, meaning as that's part of this too. So, you know, where do you find meaning in your life? Like what situations, places, things? Yeah. Um, I think it's like just values really, um, like some sort of sense of like ground truth. That's why I love math. Honestly, is like, it's like, <laughs> it's pretty easy to point at this and be like, this is true. <laughs> right. Um, so I mean that, I, I think that, you know, also back to what I said of, of, of seeing people be happy, um, if you have like a, a view of the world as something that's like misplaced and like you're actively being a part in terms of making it better, I, I think that's like a great place to attribute meaning. Hmm. Um, I'm interested in, in, in what other people have, have said here because I, I think that's uh, that's like probably one of the areas where like you could really tell a lot of differences in, in people. Um, but yeah, I think th- those connections, uh, my family is uh, amazingly important to me. Um, friendships. Nature, cool. nature. Honestly, I feel like whenever I'm out mm. of nature, I'm like, I'm like, oh, we're here you know, on, on Earth, just hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that really puts things in perspective, huh? Yeah. You're like, look at this thousand year old tree. Like, I'm not very old, <laughs> like, dude. I mean, you just feel like, yeah, moments where you feel small. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, also like, you know, the idea of like, where do I find meaning? It's like maybe, maybe like sometimes like being the place of being okay with there maybe not being meaning is is like just is quite, I think, uh, grounding, like makes you feel very present. Like for me, like when I'm walking in the woods or, you know, just looking at the ocean and being like, this is it. There's nothing, there's not something more. It's just water, you know, like hitting the shore. Mm-hmm. Uh, that like in some ways is, is like pretty comforting to me. Mm. Yeah. You just, it just is. It's <laughs> is. <laughs> Namaste, you know? To quote an old hippie I heard, it's the isness, man. <laughs> That's all there is. Um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then I want to talk about intention too, yeah. since that seems to be, I know, a hot topic nowadays and I think is a really good way of thinking about the world. Um, I ran across a framework that I found really interesting, which is this kind of uh, spectrum of service to self versus service to others. Okay. In terms of your intent. Right. Um, and so what do you find is more rewarding of the two? And then, you know, how do you think of them? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've really over indexed, I feel like on the serving others component recently, I'm mm. super excited to, uh, interested in exploring the other, other sides of it. Uh, I guess like biking is like a big way of, I've done, done that for myself. Meditation is also, I would say like largely self-serving. Um, I, I think that like the serving others to me though, like I've found it much more rewarding in terms mm. of, um, I don't know you get closer connections. Like I, I feel like uh, a good way to describe a life is like the connections and, and interactions that you've had. And, and so like by serving others, I think that that brings so many more positive interactions towards you. Um, so I've like really, really enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, no, in terms of intentions, I, I mean, I, I do an exercise uh, at least once a week where, you know, take a minute and just like with every breath just think uh, like, how can I be kind to you? How can I be kind to you? And um, that the question is intentionally, uh, from that perspective and it's meant to apply both to, you know, others as well as yourself, um, and kind of encouraging the empathetic, like context, uh, getting kind of exercise of like, w- like what, like what can, what can I do to make you happy? What can I do to make you feel fulfilled? Mm-hmm. Um, and the answers are, are sometimes like kind of surprising to me. So it's mm-hmm. been, uh, you know, helpful to, to be able to go forward with that intention and then notice more places to be kinder. Hmm. Do you have any of those answers, surprising answers on tap? No, willing to share no I, I don't really have. I mean, it's, it's more like in the moment of like realizing like, oh, I'm, I just haven't slept or like, oh, I just need to, uh, you know, take a moment to like, to like be alone. Um, mm. Like um, I was with the, I was with a friend the other night and, and I just said like, hey, like honestly, like I just, I've had, uh, you know, like cop chats and got his speeches like every single day the last 12 days like i just need some time to be alone and like like being willing to say like oh i need i need this for myself mm-hmm. is um it's not something that's like intuitive to me and so like being able to recognize that and communicate it is, is a great exercise 
Hmm. Great example. And that, yeah, yeah, that's, I think it slots under the concept of like self care. Yeah. Right. Which is, yeah, you're kind of super people, but also. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, but yeah, like, you know, chill out a little bit. Exactly. <laughs> little bit. Balance that out. Cool. Um, and then, you know, talking about intention, uh, let's move to motivation. What motivates you and gets you out of bed every morning? Uh, yeah. Uh, greatness. I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I, I mean, like. <laughs> what does I, greatness mean to you? Yeah. I mean, it's just absolute uh, excellence in everything that you take on. And I think that we can all strive to be better. Um, mm. Like, I mean, I, I think I have like a very much like zero or like 140% type of personality. <laughs> yeah, you do. And so, you know, it's like you know, uh, it's like, Oh, you want to go biking? It's like, no, let's go fucking biking. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like we're going, <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, that, that, that can go into a bunch of ways. And, and so, um, I, I, I really get a kick from impressing myself and it's uh, a lot of, I mean, you know, uh, like giving some talks or, or like running the nonprofit, like how can I do this better? You know, how can I do my job better at work? Like, how can I, uh, be closer, like if there's some strained relationships in my life, like how can I make them better? Um, mm. And just, I think just the, like the operation of like being unbiased yourself, like setting goals for yourself that are reasonable uh, and like creating a plan, you know, to attain them is, uh, is like I said, making lists and checking them off, man. <laughs> like mm. it's so, so that, that's a big one. Greatness in every aspect of your life. I mean, I, I, uh, I yeah, I like maybe, Maybe there's room, and I, like, greatness can also be like greatness of just ch chilling out and like treating yourself to a night in, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I think that like that that mentality uh, is, I don't know, it just makes things feel more purposeful in mm. some ways. It's like it feels like less routine. Like I'm not, I, I have coworkers who are like, you know, you could go to the job and like just do the job, you know, or you could go and like really think really really hard about being like the absolute best at it. Like, what does that actually mean? Like, how can you do better? Um, and if you're saying like, maybe there isn't a way to do better, like probably I would argue maybe reconsider that. Um, but if not, like maybe change your situations. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And, and the way I, cause I, I feel similarly about what I do. Um, that's probably why we're close friends, <laughs> but it's, or part of it anyway. But I also want to comment, like what I found is that the being great to yourself and like learning how to chill out makes you being gr like, it's easier for you to be great at those other things as a result of yeah. that. Like it feeds like that for me, that service to self and service to others feed each other. Right. Like if you're like working yourself to the bone, and not sleeping, you're going to be of shit service to others. You're going right. to be useless. Right. Yeah. Um, so you need to balance that out. And like, that's part of that concept of being great is recognizing the macro picture and like what needs to be balanced. Yeah. Well, well-roundedness. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, for sure. I, that is one thing that I learned um, coming out of my last role into this one was that, you know, I, I saw life as was like work and like play and like, that was it. And it mm. was just these like two dimensions. And then you realize like, wait, there's like all these other ones of like self care and like, you know, uh, like uh, so many different areas to invest in and, uh, to make sure that you're like really kind of balancing them all out. Um, it's a great exercise. Oh my gosh. What a life. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, you're, you'll never be bored if you if you put your mind towards that. That's for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's uh, yeah. There's like there's days you want to go home and there's days you want to like, you know, take it easy. But uh, but boredom is, is never really you know never never really there. Yeah, true that. Cool. And then one other uh, question that's a little more out there is: Are you religious or spiritual? Yeah, uh, is it w one or the other, <laughs> or is it uh, either or and or? Uh, I don't know. I don't really, I mean, I mean maybe spiritual, um, mm. at best. I don't really know how to define that though. Hmm. What's your then like macro perspective on like, what are we doing here? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> you I mean, said I, you had a lot of existential yeah, yeah, things yeah, come yeah. to you. Like, no, I what's mean, what's going on in that head? Right. Yeah. Like what, why does it all matter? Mm. Um, I don't know if it does. I mean, <laughs> truthfully, I, 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 I'm not like, I mean, it's one of those things is like, we're, we're alive. Like, let's make it as great as we can for everybody and mm -hmm. uh, enjoy the ride and leave it a little better than we, we found it. Um, sure. You know, I mean, that's, that's, that's as far as I've gotten, um, <laughs> you know, and there's definitely days where it's like, but why, like, why not just watch the world burn, you know, like, and mm. um, yeah, I don't know. I think that's like maybe some human thing is that like, we just care mm. about people. We care about each other. Um, 
yeah, but maybe, maybe there's something I'm missing. Mm. I mean, that, that sounded really, really succinct and well put. Like, um, you know, I, I would dive into the word, or I'd like to dive into the word uh, matter, right? Like, how yeah. do you define what matters? And I think we kind of touched on that earlier with, when the question of you finding meaning, at least for me, meaning is the reason you do stuff. Yeah. Right? Like, that's yeah. why we're out here is like, right. you do things that you find meaningful. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's like joy, it's like happiness. Uh, I mean, like, like that, I think is like, I don't know, I've, I've like had moments in my life where I feel love, where I feel happiness. And like, it's, you know, it's pretty damn good. And like, I think everybody should feel that. Um, <laughs> yeah, in, in whatever <laughs> capacity you can, for sure. Um, but yeah, cool. So nothing crazy, like spiritual, religious, but just, you know, pra- yeah. practical, like, hey, here's what yeah, I mean, us, I yeah. I definitely you know have have um, what I will say is that like I was definitely very like empirical. Uh, I mean, I, I'm a mathematician, right? Like I I definitely f- was at one point being like, oh, like there's parts of this world we can't yet model perfectly, so we'll just approximate them, mm. you know. But like now I've like come to terms with like there's definitely, in my opinion, like things outside of science um, that are like around, you know. It's like mm. there, like in terms of like. Um, I don't know, like intention setting, for example. I mean, I mean maybe there's some science to this, but you know, I, I feel like you probably have more of the more of the words for it. But like a lot of like the fairy things that we talk about, <laughs> you know, I feel like like I would have completely written them off like even three years ago. Yeah. And now I'm like, okay, there's something something here, you know. Um, but I don't really have like a good word for it. Interesting. Yeah. So so for the audience's context, um, <laughs> we have uh, the the fairy things are. <laughs> Yeah, I guess we would call them the esoteric kind of spiritual, you might call them hippie or woo, um, things that a, one large group of friends subscribes to. And like that uh, mode of thinking and operating has actually quite successfully infiltrated our lives. Um, and that's what you're talking about here, which is like yeah. intention setting. Like, how? wait, so you sit there and you set your intention and things change for the better as a result. And you tend to achieve your intention if you really go for it's it. It's wild. I, have, I was like, bullshit. <laughs> you know, and I mean, like, I, I question everything, 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 especially things that are not backed with like double blind studies. And, and so, yeah. you know, so then you do this and then like, I mean, my, my, my life did, has changed for sure. Uh, and it's freaking cool. Cool. Well, that, that's a great validation <laughs> yeah. um, of that stuff. Um, we definitely dive more into this in, in other episodes. I'll, I'll link the ones that, you know, discuss this in more detail, but the gist of it is, is your your consciousness which is um not well studied or understood in a scientific concept or context has been extremely well studied in a experiential you might call phenomenological context by all of those monks who meditate in the mountains and they write books and they tell you here's what the nature of consciousness is like by using their consciousness as a tool right um and a lot of those things that come out of it are things like attention setting and meditation and you know understanding like you are consciousness underneath or around or in whatever you, you word you want to use everything else too right and that consciousness has this creative power to it where when you do set an intention it sort of like helps line the rest of everything you know up around it it creates mm-hmm. this focal point and you know when you and other people even have the same focal point stuff tends to happen yeah <laughs> it's it's totally a totally wild concept we're not really taught about um, and yet you can see it everywhere, you know, the, the concept of manifestation, you know, there's tons of books on this now, a lot of attraction, all that stuff. Um, they go into it deeper, but you know, this is cool to see someone from a traditional, highly empirical background. Be oh like, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. it's just, it's, to me, it's like so easy to, you look at all the, look at the incredible things. I mean, like, look at this microphone, like that science has given us, right? Like yeah. it is mind blowing. This is sand that we dug up and now it works and records audio. Like, you know, and, <laughs> and so people should be freaking out all the time about that. But like the extension of like, this can explain everything, uh, everything in our lives. Uh, I think that's like a big jump mm-hmm. and like one that I've gotten more comfortable. Like, so if you'd asked me like, are you spiritual or religious? Like before, but like, no, obviously I'm, I read a book. Like I'm not, you know, <laughs> and now it's like, okay, well, you know, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, I just, I guess, encourage the audience to just explore it yourselves and see what you come up with. Cause it seems like this is the one thing that instruments can't really touch if you don't count your own attention as an instrument. Right. Uh, yeah. And that's the one instrument that we all have. Um, that's true equal opportunity right there for me is that we all are conscious and can at least do that bit of internal knowing and research 
um, and just see how, how it applies to your own life. Um, Though I do want to build instruments that measure that. I, th I think that's like one of the coolest areas of research <laughs> is like do d data science applied to, to uh, like brainwaves or I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like there's there's definitely uh, it'd be cool to be able to measure these things. Yeah. Well, theoretically, one guy has. Well, um, <laughs> so just a quick quick aside. Um, some monk, some time I can't remember who um, told us how many thoughts per second you have, and it's somewhere I, th I think, and I might be off by a few orders of magnitude here, <laughs> is like three billion a second, nice. which came out to be, and again, I'm probably off by a few orders of magnitude here. The exact smallest um, is something the Large Hadron Collider found, like when they, <laughs> they they basically smashed a bunch of atoms into each other, and it, it wasn't I don't remember if it was the Planck length or not. But anyway, they found some number that correlated exactly to that. And I was like, what the fuck? So like <laughs> this dude, you know, with just his brain or whatever, right, spirit, uncovered the same thing that takes like a multi-mile long particle collider to figure yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think, I think, uh, I don't I'm know. Oop. No, you shouldn't be right now. <laughs> Sorry for the interruption. That was, that was Siri. Um, yeah, I, I, um, yeah, I don't know the state of the research right now, but like, I, I think of like dream inventions, right? And like one that I think would be incredible would be like, imagine being able to tell immediately what headspace somebody is in. Like, mm. I don't know, like, I, I don't know if the, the moment, uh, and for me, it's, I think about like event planning and whatnot, but it's like that moment where you're all like, oh, like, where should we go eat? Like, what should we do? What should we do tonight? And I like, can go like this way, that way, whatever. And like, just to get a feeling of where everybody's at. Like, I think that's, maybe that's doable. I don't know. Mm. That'd be cool. That'd be interesting. But I think we also have words for that. Yeah, yeah, word, yeah word, <laughs> words are cool too. Words are cool too. I, I, I think words are fantastic. But I think, I think doing it at scale, like that, that, I mean, that would the societal implications mm. are, are, I mean, mm. like incredible, right? Like, imagine if you knew how everybody on the street was walking by. They're like, that guy's having a bad day. Like, maybe, maybe that changes the way people be act and like behave. Yeah. And start noticing how people are like feeling around you. Like, wait, why are all the red circles over here? And then like, helping all, everybody's happy over there. You know, it's yeah. Yeah, that'd be interesting for sure. A lot of implications that I I wanted to rabbit hole down, but I'm gonna avoid. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> so cool. And and from now, I think I'll uh, we're we're coming up on the last section, um, which is, so we we've done meaning fulfillment. Uh, we're moving on to actionable advice, um, and one area that you've touched on pretty detailed so far. I, I want to just highlight again, which is how do you partition your time? How do you balance everything? Yeah, uh, no, I mean I think uh, like extremely intently about this. Um, so I, I think there's like different different segments. I think that like a component of, of like being able to produce enough in a society that is capitalistic is important. So like creating uh, in a way that allows you to have excess uh, is, is like one part of it. So like my job is like super important to me. Um, and through that, I have developed the flexibility to do other things like invest in creative outlets to invest in philanthropic and like uh, and nonprofit efforts. Um, as well as to take time to uh, really invest in like important connections and then also in myself. So mm. I would I would say it's like uh, in, in in no particular order is like uh, like giving back, creating yourself, uh, in investing, like reflecting, um, and uh, yeah, I mean you know putting just really kind of making sure that you have all these these components of, of your of your life um, kind of balanced out like. Mm. I, I make sure that I always have a couple of hours a week uh, to like, you know, work out, to meditate, um, to like make sure that I'm, I'm thinking really sharply on, on, on different topics that are important to me. Uh, and then also like giving back and always having that, that perspective is kind of grounds it for mm. sure. Um, I think like family also, like I, I you know, make tons of time to like call my friends and family and make sure that uh, everybody's feeling good. Mm. And well, that's great. You just hit on the second question I was going to ask, which is about making time for those you care about. Um, but I want to get also, so so that's your categories. What is the process by which you do so? Because it sounds like you've got a super busy life, right? <laughs> you got your your day job, you're applying to grad school, you've got your nonprofit, like flying remote. Like how how do you do this? Uh, yeah, man, you just kind of just do it. Um, <laughs> like, do you use the, specific tools? Yeah, or I mean, process? A cal I have my calendar is like if it's not on the calendar, it doesn't exist. Um, which mm -hmm. you know is. Uh, it's it's great, but it's it's difficult when people are like, "Hey, do you want to hang out tonight?" And I'm like, "I can hang out March 14th." You know, <laughs> you know <those> me. <laughs> from seven to yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it removes some of the some of the ability for spont spontaneity. I feel like that, that's like mm -hmm. the main thing you give up um, in doing more is is like you know there's still some room for it. And I actually like have like 
it's so ridiculous. It's like blocked off. Like this is like spontaneity time. Like, you know, I'm going to leave this night. Like for example, like this weekend <laughs> scheduled spontaneity. Like, yeah. Tonight, for example, I intentionally don't have, I have like things I can do tonight, but I'm firmly committed to any. So I'm like pretty excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> and like that, that, that's a wild night for me. You it's rebel. Like, yeah, right? Not having a 7 to 7.15, we're going to be checking in, you know, hanging out. 7.15 to 7.45. <laughs> oh, my yeah. Lord. Um, no, but that, I mean, I, I, I find a schedule that works for me. Like, I, I like pairing um, the physical activity with, like, mental introspection. So I always do, like, weightlifting in the morning and then do, uh, like, meditations um, or... Like we'll do like very long bike rides uh, without any uh, audio stimulus. So just just kind of mm. there, like really in the woods, kind of quietly thinking for like six, seven, eight hours at a time, um, which is I think unblocking for many things. Like when we're talking about like unbiased uh, unbiasing yourself, like for me that's been my answer is because like I you know I put up a fucking good fight in terms <laughs> of like <laughs> convincing myself that like I'm right uh, and. So sometimes it's just like sitting in the room with with yourself and be like, okay, all right, who's gonna who's gonna leave first? <laughs> so, yeah, um, that that's a big part of it. And then the nonprofit stuff is, uh, I mean, I gotta give credit to uh, to my fabulous team. Like they are the reasons you know I'm able to keep doing that because that's one where it's like you know the the direction is like just in. It's just like it's just things just go in there, energy goes in, money goes in, mm -hmm. um, and, and that's like how it's supposed to be, and it's great, but I, there's no way to do that without a fantastic team, and um, just like resonating off the excitement and like care that people have to like pour themselves into this um, is, is like kind of pretty encouraging. So. Yeah, yeah, and since we talked about this a few times, um, let's dive into the nonprofit. You know, at, at the end, I was gonna ask you like a project that you wanna bring to audience's attention, mm -hmm. but this seems like a good time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, I got involved with Destined for X about two years ago, um, and Destined for X is a nonprofit focusing uh, on student, high school students from underprivileged, underrepresented minorities. Um, and the idea is that, th first of all, their outcomes aren't the same in terms of um, kind of traditional me metrics, but um, we have the hypothesis that a lot of this is attributed to like a sense of identity and privilege. And so, for example, I grew up in a household where both my parents, my parents met at Warden, you know, like my dad's an senior executive, my mom's an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And so like, I was applying to colleges, applying to jobs and networking, all these things helped. But like even beyond that, some things like, oh, you just had an interview, like send an email after that interview to follow up or like here is how you should maintain a LinkedIn or um, convincing people from underprivileged backgrounds too that they have a space in traditionally privileged areas uh is is incredibly mm. um uh empowering mm -hmm. i would say and and actually quite quite easy to do uh if we do it right mm. um and so like i have students who they grew up in uh in, like everyone around them is like from uh, you know retail like i have uh, one of my students he both their parents are like greeters at walmart and so you know they everybody in their community is is come from retail backgrounds and like they know what a software engineer does but they've never had uh, software and credit to Facebook, um, you know, open up their doors and say, Hey, come in, like here, let me tell you my story and how it's similar to yours and why you belong here and why your perspective not only, uh, is welcome here, but makes your, your input more valuable. Um, mm. and so given that, that confidence of like, no, you're like, you are worthy of love and you're worthy of success, uh, regardless of where you come from, yeah. uh, is, is the entire kind of motivation that we have behind our work. And so you're providing them this like feeling of like comfort and welcomeness and then like what else is offered? Oh yeah. So it's, it's, it's pretty actionable too. Um, mm -hmm. so like we definitely, we start off every day with meditations and we end every day with a gratitude wall. Um, so mm -hmm. those are kind of the mindfulness components of it. But other than that, we were pretty specific. Like we walk students through like what is expected to be worn to an interview in different types of uh, industries. Like just cause like you might not have that example of like wearing a suit to a banker interview if you grew up in one of those backgrounds. Um, or going to have them ha get like their headshots taken and like mm. being treated like a professional and like welcomed. Um, and then the capstone of, so, so the capstone like project for, for the, for the four day program is we have the students come up with one way that they want to make the world better or you know, give back to their communities. Um, and then they share that idea at, at the banquet. Uh, and so, um, what's really empowering for them is that like they come up with this productive, uh, definitely like social good oriented, uh, or even profitable, um, not those are different things, um, mm. uh, idea, and then share it 
it put it themselves out there and then get feedback immediately from so like my my grandparents sat at the t- same table as Garrick, who's one of our students this year, um, and and so he had an idea similar to this to have a podcast, and um, and he just got like encouragement from somebody. He's like, oh yeah, you can do that. Like, here's how you should, here, you should talk to my friends who are doing this, and like mm-hmm. just getting that um, that feeling of progress. Um, Networking, mentorship. It, kick, it gets it gets the ball rolling, and it's mm. it's cool to see where it goes. Yeah, and and how can people like find out more about this? Yeah, so so we're on destinforx.com. Um, my my email is Alejandro uh, Perez Alejandro Perez at destinedforx.com. dot um, and it's X the letter X yeah so destined for X yeah, yeah. Um, destined F O R X correct dot com yeah and uh, yeah so I mean that is a great way we have mentor we have men- online mentorship um, programs uh, and also accepted donations but um, you know I, I, what I've realized is that it's actually it's not just it's not just us I think that like just encouraging people so the reason I got involved with the nonprofit world more broadly was because um, I realized like a mismatch in, in kind of how I was spending my time and doing, uh, doing, uh, using my resources compared to like how I th- would like to see it. Mm. Um, and so I got to the point where I was doing, uh, like these hundred mile bike rides. And so I realized I'm like, if I'm doing a hundred mile bike ride, like, you know, it's one of those things that if you raise, if I just like put it on Facebook, like donate, like people would. Mm. And so I realized by not doing that, I was like, almost like taking money away from, mm. From nonprofit. So found that, uh, kickstarted there, found Destin for X and, and really got involved since. But I guess what I'm trying to say is like, help us out for sure when you need it. But uh, like, but, <laughs> but, but also if not us, like find something that you care about that is, that, you know, is your own version of that and, and make it happen. Yeah. Cool. Well, I, I really encourage people to support this. It's a great program. Um, yeah, thank you for coming to the banquet this year. It yeah. Was, it, was, it was really cool. That, that, all, that, all, that was super cool. Honestly, to see all those kids up there with like such, big ideas and like uh, what seemed like, like you said, the confidence to make it happen and uh, to go and like so many like local community ideas too. I was like blown away. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and they're, they're so articulate and like sociable. They like came up to me afterward, like just chatting and um, as, as if they were like pros, yeah. it was amazing. Um, so yeah, yeah. Hugely supportive of it. It's, it's a great cause. Um, yeah. Check out just destined for X.com. That's F O R X.com. If you want to learn more. Um, that's normally how we end, but I have a couple other things I want to ask in that vein, um, which is, you know, we, we talked about earlier kind of like challenging beliefs and, you know, poking yourself in the axioms. But I, I want to ask, like, how do you gather new perspectives and can you share, like, make sure to share that process for other people? Because I think that's really critical in developing yourself. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's always just like... I guess finding areas where I disagree with people, like, or I don't see it the same way uh, as, as they do, mm. um, and then like questioning the assumptions and motivations behind that, and and I I think that like giving people um, the right intentions. I think like okay for for your for your people watching, like for example, like um, like I, I promise you, most people here are probably be like liberal backgrounds, like really trying to empathize with why somebody would have a, a different perspective is like, I think incredibly important mm-hmm. um, just for the sake of like discourse um, mm-hmm. and like learning. Uh, if we're going to value ourselves based on uh, our willingness to uh, explore and learn about the world around us, like to discredit a bunch of people because of the way that they see certain things and not fully understand it is uh, I think kind of sh- cutting yourself short in terms of fully understanding the people around you. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I would say like, yeah, poking yourself in the axioms um <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> um yeah i mean like, like i guess like ask yourself what's important right and like I, I think that i i went through a lot of that as we talked about in new york where i was like my job is the most important thing in the world to me to like oh it's like a important thing to me mm. you know versus like the one um mm-hmm. and so realizing that there's like space for more than one set of values in your life like like uh, you know, I mentioned earlier, for example, like I went through a phase where I was thinking like altruism is the only thing you can do, you know, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, it's it it's not sustainable without the balance of of like investing yourself or mm-hmm. um, doing those things. So, yeah, I, I think approaching it from the perspective of like, why am I happy? Why am I seeing myself this way? Um, and then working backwards towards like, what assumptions are you making about that? And like, what if they were like, what if they weren't true? Like, what if what if it wasn't true that this is how you should measure yourself? Yeah. Yeah, so taking a really uh, critical eye to yourself and then also when someone has a differing opinion from you, 
trying your best to see it from their position because there might be, and there usually is what I've found. In fact, nearly every single time there is some truth there that should be taken into account. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is, I mean, there's always like, yeah, it's, it's incredible how like you can, like you have to go like literally one person away to find something you don't know, you know, <laughs> like it's like one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool to be able to find what that is. Like, I, I think that's always like one, um, Oh, here's another thing, though, is, is I, I, I really feel like people tend to um, define their relationships by the things they disagree on versus the things that they agree on. Mm. Um, and so I think that like one thing that I did, for example, when I made that like map of, of um, all, all people I know really was like I wrote down like things that I, I agree on and resonate and come naturally to me and then things that like don't and like why. Mm. And I question like what is, what's like what's the, di- what's the difference, well, you know, and and trying to understand what's like causing that is uh yeah, that's a good place to start for introspection. Yeah, that's an impressive exercise, man. So <laughs> we can add that to the list. So just to recap what you did, you found you started with 50-ish but got to like 70 or 80 people for whom you were gracious for yeah. or they had impacted your life in a positive way. And now you've gone even one step further and you uh, said, here's what we agree what we agree on comes naturally what we don't. Yeah, yeah I mean, wow. I, I like, you know, like you didn't do that for the whole 50, but, uh, <laughs> okay. but uh, I mean, it, it was more like I... Um, I don't know, I used to do like an audit every year of like, okay, who am I? What am I doing? Mm. Um, and part of that was like, okay, like how have I grown over the last year? Who's come into my life? Who's left? Why? Um, understanding like specifically like what keeps gets me excited about spending time with people. Yeah. Um, like for you, for example, it's like the introspection. Like I feel like there's always some balance and thoughtfulness and like, uh, like also execution matched with it and like things like that um, versus like, you tend to like see more towards the spirituality components of things and like have like a deeper understanding or uh, affinity towards, towards those. And that comes naturally to me. Mm. And so like questioning, like, okay, like wh- why, like, why is that different? Why would we different? Why? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's like with so much common ground over here, like how is it, what's the, what's up with the difference? Yeah. And like, mm-hmm. and so you start compiling that for like many people and then mm-hmm. you're like, is there, is there a common theme? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, that's what we're doing on the podcast, <laughs> quite yeah. literally. Yeah, that's why I was so freaking excited to come here, man. This is this has been great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. Um, so that that's one other like key piece of actionable advice. Um, another one is this is actually right in the vein of Destin for X is for our younger audience. What advice would you give them if they're like just starting like their careers or their self discovery journey? Uh, yeah, um, this, this, is, this is the theme of the TED Talk I'm giving, so I should I should have a, a pretty strong uh, answer here. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I think the idea of uh, explore and exploit is, is really valuable in early career. Um, so I obviously now work in tech, but prior to that, I work in finance. Um, and I think that like the opportunity to try something out outside of what you want to do long term mm. uh, is valuable within your early career. You have to be tactical about it. Um, but I think that like starting off um, and like really questioning what you want to do and how you want to spend your time. Um, is really, really important. So like asking a tremendous amount of questions. Um, one thing I tell, tell our for X students is that like they need to stop seeing their inexperience in youth as a uh, something that's holding them back, uh, but something that is their greatest resources. Mm. And so we tell them like, I get, I mean, every week, like 20 something emails from people who want to be data scientists. And, you know, if they're like, oh, I'm a data scientist at this company and I want to be a data scientist at this company, I'm like, you know, you, like you, I get it. And that's important. But um, if somebody emails me, he's like, "Hey, I'm a high school student, and I have no idea what a data scientist does." You know, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna clear my calendar. And mm-hmm. so, mm-hmm. Uh, I think that like the opportunity to to lean into that, like, "Hey, I, I have no clue what I'm doing." Like, help <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, is is uh, is something that like not enough students uh, or young people, I think, do. Um, and like, that comes with being vulnerable. It's like the ability to be like, "Hey, like, I I can't add any value here, I, but I want to eventually." So. Uh, and finding people who are interested in, in, in giving back. I think uh, there are so much. That's one thing I love about this nonprofit. It, faith in humanity restored forever. You know, it's <laughs> like people really want to help everybody. It's so beautiful. So reach out. Yeah. Cool. Um, and yeah, uh, with that, I'm out of questions. We finished <laughs> it. Um, right on, man. This has been so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much for doing it. Yeah. The, the feeling's mutual. Um, and yeah, so just, to, uh, one last time, destinedforx.com. That's destined F O R X.com. 
you can reach out to Alejandro at Alejandro. Uh, dot Perez at destined for X.com. P E R E Z. We'll put it in uh, the the description of wherever this is going to get uploaded. Um, thanks so much for coming on, man. Thank you for having me. With that. Yeah.